Herman Hunter, rookie 11th round draft choice. Room to go. And finally brought down by Everson Wall from behind at the 41-yard line. That's a 40-yard kickoff return to open the game. There is a flag down on the Cowboys' side of the field. Well, off side, kickoff. Thing that Hunter did so well, he went up inside in the middle, brought the coverage into the middle, Vern, and then dipped outside, and there was no one there. That was good, good setup that time on a kickoff return. Off side, kicking team, decline, first down. Ron Jaworski, who bruised the shoulder in the third quarter of last week's game, will open at quarterback. Ernest Jackson, fresh from a 162-yard game against the Cardinals. Haddix, Kenny Jackson, and Mike Quick. Up front, Reeves, Kenny, Dennard, Baker, Mitchell. Spagnola, the tight end, is expected to have a big day today. Splitbacks on first down, and Mike Quick is the motion man. Ernest Jackson, number 41, scoots to the outside and picks up a quick seven or eight yards. Dexter Klingscale, number 47, made the tackle. Defensively for the Cowboys, Jones, Dutton, Randy White, and Jim Jeffcoat, the right end, who's come on in the mid to late part of the season. Mike Hegman, Gene Lockhart, and Jeff Rohr are the linebackers. And in the defensive secondary, Walls, Fellas, Klingscale, and Michael Downs, it is Jaworski's contention they are an average secondary made excellent only by the pressure applied by the front four of Dallas. Boy, wouldn't they like to know that he said that? You probably yeah. do know it, don't they? They'll hear about it. Second down. Jackson for the first down. One nice way to play the Cowboys, Vern, is to stay out of passing situations where you give them the opportunity to blitz. Now, we know they beat the blitz the last time, but now that they're running the ball so well with Jackson, if they can continue to run, they will run all day long. First and ten, Ron Jaworski. For the season, 11 touchdowns and only nine interceptions. Did not practice until the end of the week. Worked out Thursday and Friday. Jackson coming left. And this time, no room. As Jeff Rohr and Gene Lockhart collaborate on the tackle. One of the things you try to do against a running football team, if they are successful, is you like to send the outside linebackers. And when you do that, then you stunt all the linemen. That time they sent from the outside Hegman and they sent from the inside Lockhart, blitzed them, and that time they were successful in stopping the running attack. Matter of fact, they lost a yard. That brings up a second down, 11. No score, 12.58 to go, first quarter. And Jaworski will throw for the first time. Little relief foul pass into the right flat. Michael Haddix leads his way for another Philadelphia first down at the Cowboy 35. Everson Walls, number 24, made the tackle. Haddix, a former number one draft pick, makes the catch. Well, they came with a two tight end offense, one single back. As you can see, no blitz. Notice this, no blitz. Now Haddix moves out and to the right. Now Jaworski moves out, finds no one inside, and just drops the ball off to Haddix. Boy, he's got all the room in the world. He wants the outside. Finally, Walls, 24, makes the stop. First down. First down at the 35-yard line, opening drive of the game. And this time from the eye formation with two receivers right side. This is quick in motion. Pitch out Jackson, Haddix in front. Cuts back and slips, and his ankle tackled at the 30-yard line, a pickup of five. No secret to what they're trying to do here. First down, run. Second down, run. Third down, run if we have to. But they're staying, they're keeping the Cowboys off balance by running Jackson. You know, Vern, the thing that's so nice about this is that they've gotten away from Jaworski's throwing the football so much. In the last three weeks, they've started running Jackson, the guy they got from San Diego in a trade. There is the Swamp Fox, Marion Campbell, who said when this team was one and four, we are not out of it. Few believed him then, everybody does now. Second and five. Jackson again, this time hit at the line. He still surges forward for a couple of yards. Randy White goes with him. It was White who made the tackle, number 54. I saw him make one of the most miraculous defensive plays against Philadelphia here ever. They, were, they had a wide receiver named Scott Pitsky, Terry. Caught a pass from Jaworski. Right. And Randy White caught him from behind after a 55-yard chase. Not bad. Well, the guy was a linebacker out of Maryland. All he talks to me about is he keeps saying, when are you going to take me fishing in Florida? Because he hears I catch all those big bass down there. You will. 
Herman Hunter in the lineup from the shotgun. Jaworski looks deep across the middle. Fires caught. First down. Philadelphia at the 23. Catch made by Mike Quick in front of Everson Walls. Well, the thing about that pass was simply they just put Quick in the slot. And I'm talking to Quick yesterday. He said, I like playing in the slot. Now, you're going to see Jaworski in the shotgun. Is he just going to drop back? They're going to snap the ball. And then Quick's going to come down, come across the middle. Now, you see in the pass rush here, but he comes across the middle, and Walls has him man for man, and he simply beat Walls. First down and 10, no score in the game. Eagles threatening from the 23. Jackson again, had it to They force him wide. Jeff Rohr forced him to the outside, allowing Dexter Klingscale, number 47, to come up and make the tackle. Well, that's one of those old high school coaching plays they always used to tell us. I never played defense, and I don't, you know, I'm just quoting mm -hmm. what they said. They mm -hmm. said, string them out, boys. Make them go wide. Don't let them cut back. Well, Jackson, they strung him out, kept him wide, and what did he do? He didn't cut back, did he? Just like you and you used to play. You couldn't cut back either, only because you were slow. That was at University Junior High School, as I recall, <laughs> in the 50s down in Austin. Second down and seven from the 20. No score, first quarter. Blitz. Blitz. Jaworski gets great blocking. Fires it incomplete. Oh, there's there the is flag. a flag. Two of them. There's the flag. Walls came inside and jammed the wide receiver. And you can see it, folks. They're booing here, but it was a, it was just as clear as anything and you, you would want to see. This we'll may be defensive you. holding, as a matter of fact. No, nope, it's pass interference. Number 24, first down. It was not a safety blitz. It was just simply a linebacker blitz. As you look at Walls, 24, the corner. He's outside, isolated, right on your screen. Now, in, inside comes, that's Garrity, number 86, and there's Wall's hands all over. Garrity said, hey, look, talk about me today. Well, give me something to talk about. He says, I'm a little guy, but I make big plays. There's a big play. First down and goal, Eagles from the nine-yard line. No score, 10-0-2 to go, first quarter. Quick in motion. Ernest Jackson, right side, bounce backwards. And the job is applied by Jim Jeffcoat, number 77. One of those situations where, you, as you look at, at big Leonard Mitchell, he is kind of swayed back. You know, yesterday, hey, you know, Coach Campbell was telling me that, that Mitchell said that, that Coach, you and I are a lot alike. He said, we walk alike. We're swayed back. And, and, and there, there's Marion Campbell. He said, you're right. He said, Coach, you know something else? We look alike. We got the big guts hanging out. He said, yeah, that's right. He said, and then Marion said, you know what else, Leonard? He said, we think alike. And then Leonard said, well, not so much, Coach, only because what Marion Campbell signed him over a hundred times this year <laughs> I think that's a little exaggeration but he's finding a lot for being overweight first second and goal Jaworski blitz again pass incomplete Jeff Rohr number 50 and Michael Downs number 26 came with a fury and met at Jaworski's right arm well the thing we had talked about at the offset of the show was the fact that they were going to blitz up the middle come up inside that time downs 26 free safety coming inside with roar an outside linebacker both of them coming up inside and putting the pressure on jaworski let's look at it from the end zone as you can see this is what jaworski sees right up the middle there's 26 that's downs there's roar coming up from the outside or roar coming up from the outside putting the pressure on jaworski number 36 herman hunter has come in so also has greg garrity hunter and michael haddix are on either side of Ron Jaworski on third and goal from the nine. Blitz again. Jaworski incomplete. Had to get rid of it very quickly, intended for Greg Garrity. Well, what happened, Vern, was Jaworski was on the wrong page with Garrity 86. Garrity breaks out, break out to the right side. He's wide open. Ryan throws it to the inside. Now, you see the blitz by Bates inside. There's a pass outside. Actually, that ball's deflected. That's what happened. Garrity was wide open. Scott, 22, was covering him, and the ball was deflected that time by Downs. That brings on Paul McFadden, who is 17 of 20 this year and had a string of nine straight broken last week when he missed from 52 yards out. Perfect for the second-year kicker from Youngstown State. The Philadelphia Eagles draw first blood on that McFadden field goal, and that was an impressive manner in which to open this ball game. Well, they moved the football down there. They got the good kickoff return, then took it on down there and got the field goal. Saturday, NCAA basketball returns to CBS Sports with a matchup of the teams ranked number one and two in most of the preseason polls. It'll be number one Georgia Tech against number two Michigan in the tip-off classic. 
So be sure to join Gary Bender and Billy Packer for that uh, for what should be an outstanding matchup Saturday at 1:30 Eastern, 10:30 Pacific, here on CBS Sports. That drive began at the 41-yard line after the kickoff return by Herman Hunter. So it was 50 yards in 12 plays. And it consumed just about six minutes on the clock. We have 9.09 to go in the first quarter. You know, if I'd have had a little more time on that Leonard Mitchell story, I could have made that thing a lot funner than what it was. <laughs> I was... You know, I didn't have but 11 seconds. <laughs> I knew the punchline so was there. So did I, but it, it just didn't come out right, did it? But, it, you know... It, Leonard Mitchell and it, they when they walk they do look a lot alike and folks out there who cares well I don't really care now myself <laughs> first time Paul McFadden will kick it to either Robert Levette number 29 or James Jones Todd Fowler is also back it was Levette who last week got a kickoff past the 30 against Chicago that was the longest kickoff return of this year for the Cowboys Dallas started off the season five and one they went up to Philadelphia and lost that game to the Eagles 16 to 14 and have won only on alternate weeks since then. And the Eagles, meanwhile, is only their only loss in the last month since October 20th came at San Francisco. And they have put themselves right back in the thick of this race. Relatively short, Levette has it at the 11. Finds some room. Almost equals the kickoff return of Herman Hunter. Well, Robert Levette out to the 39-yard the line. This is really a nifty move. Sometimes you have you make moves and cut and really sprint away from people. But the thing Levette does, look at him back up in the middle. Now he stops, hold it. Now back to the outside. Everyone came inside and he literally stopped and then turned on the speed and went outside. Boy, this is a nice move by him. Danny White does open a quarterback. He was knocked out of the Chicago game a week ago, but did practice this week, beginning on Wednesday. Dorsett. He's got a lot of room. And is tackled from behind by the ankle as he crosses Eagle Country to the 48-yard line. Mike Reichenbach got him. Well, Reichenbach may have tackled him, but I'll tell you what, right guard, 65, Kurt Peterson, as you see, leads down, comes inside, makes a fine block. Pulling outside wide. Look at him now. He sets up his man, knocks him out of bounds, and then Dorsett cuts inside, picks up 12 yards. Curtin, you can just go over there and thank old Peterson, 65 right guard, for doing a good job. That is a 14-yard gain. First down from the Eagle 47-yard line. Double tight end set this time. And two wide receivers. Dorsett. Boy, he was stiffened after a oh. two-yard gain by the nose tackle, Ken Clark, number oh. 71. We want to welcome those of you who have been watching the Washington-Pittsburgh encounter. Our score is 3-0 here. The Eagles just scored on a McFadden field goal. The Redskins still alive. They defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers at home 30-23. McFadden has kicked a field goal on the opening drive of this game. The Cowboys just got the kickoff. And returned it to the 39-yard line. Dorsett has run it twice so far. Second down and nine. Tim Newsom, number 30, around the left side. You know, Vern, one of the complaints that's been with the Cowboy offense, even though they were ranked number one, is that, oh, go ahead and let's set the offense for these folks. Cowboys, Danny White, Dorsett, Newsom, Hill, and Renfro at the skill positions up front. Chris Schultz, Heitenser, Rafferty, Peterson. Jim Cooper and Doug Cosby, who is expected to have a big role today. Good, good job, Vern. Now you're, that's your turn. <laughs> I'll get to it later. <laughs> Third down, five. You do a good job of reading. Got those graphics down. That's right. Shotgun formation, no blitz. Into the flat, Henry Newsom, first down at the 35. Now, my point I was going to make is that the defense for the Eagles is ranked 25th in the National Football League. People complain about the offense of the Cowboys, and the thing you're going to see today is you're going to naturally see them try to run the football. Well, what do they do here? They get a nice nice pass by White out the flat to Newsom. Number 30, he does a good job of picking, not only catching it, but getting the first down, and Young, 43, makes the tackle. 
want to welcome those of you who are watching New Orleans win over Minnesota 30 to 23. Our score is 3 nothing Philadelphia over Dallas. We have 654 remaining in the first quarter of play. Cowboys first and 10 at 35. North set again trying to go to the outside. Now freelances cuts back and gets to the 32. Tackle is made by Greg Brown and Reggie White, number 91. Dorsett just 57 yards away from the eighth 1,000 yard season of his career. The only season in which he has been a pro and he did not gain 1,000 was a strike shortened season of 82. White, Clark, and Brown up front. The linebackers are Wilkes, Reichenbach, Anthony Griggs, and Gary Cobb in the secondary. Young playing with a fractured uh, right forearm, a hairline fracture, Edwards Ellis, and a man having an all pro year, Wes Hopkins. Second down from the 33 yard line. Linebacker blitz is coming and White reads it perfectly. Newsom down the sideline. One of the few times you will see the Eagles send five men or more. And that time they had a linebacker coming up the middle. White adjusted and found Newsom. Well, the thing that, that you'll see a lot when teams play action a lot, you'll see a lot of linebacker blitzes. 55 Rockenbach, 58 Griggs, right up the middle, play action. No one out in the flat. There's Newsom 30. He catches it and his coverage blitz. So therefore, there's no one on him. He's in the secondary, and Edwards, 46, finally knocks him out of bounds. You know, you're going to gamble like that, and Marion Campbell told us once, you know, one thing we don't like to do with blitzes, and you said this in Philadelphia, is when we blitz, the next thing we say is we'll receive. So evidently, it backfired again. It did for a gain of 23, first and goal from the nine. Dorsett gets a seal block on the left side. Sticks his shoulder down, and Herman Edwards makes sure he doesn't go any farther than the five. This is where the Cowboys have had enormous problems this year. They have only scored 61 points in the last six games. The New York Jets got 62 last week alone. The Cowboys have gone through a stretch of three games now in which they have not scored more than 14 points, and the problems have been from the 20 on in. Second down and goal from the five. set to the two-yard line. It'll be third and goal. Well, the thing that I've always said and always believed, Vern, is the fact that when you get down here and everyone's all bunched up inside, play action pass. We want to welcome those of you who have been watching Chicago's 12th win of the 1985 season. Not a problem today. 36-0. Our score is 3-0 Philadelphia, but the Cowboys have a third and goal from the two and a half. I'm Bruno Lundquist along with Terry Bradshaw. We've got 4.48 to go first quarter. Dallas and Philly. Play fake. Door set. Touchdown. And with that touchdown, Tony Dorsett has scored his 77th of his career, breaking the record he shared with Bob Hayes. Well, as you can tell, it's a cross buck action with Kurt Peterson, 65, getting the key block, pivot around, hand the door set, and cuts back over left guard for a big hole, then bang, right up inside for the touchdown. Walks by Drew Pearson. He'll take that ball now and give it to Jerry Fowler, the assistant equipment man. They'll mark it, and Dorsett will not make the mistake of giving the ball up. He did that once after he scored on a 99-yard run, just tossed it to the stands. Set the end starts on a new scoring streak. He was held in the shutout last week. Dorsett gets the touchdown, his 77th of the career, and Dallas leads 7 to 3. Now then, yes. That's all right, baby. We got it. We got it. <laughs> Who's he going to block? Thing, look at this play. Right guard, Peterson, comes all the way across. He's going to get number 98, Brown. Center, Rafferty, blocks back on the tackle. Guard, back outside, and then all of a sudden, Dorsett, boom, right up inside, a little cross buck. Watch this. All right, there's Cornwall. He's coming across, getting out of the way. All right, here we come, a little cross buck action. Look at the hole right there. Good job by Peterson. He kicks this man out in a big, huge hole inside. That has given Dallas a 7-3 lead. Herman Hunter again from the five-yard line. And this time has to settle for a return out to the 22, and the flag is also down. 
So both scores thus far set up by good kickoff returns. Hunter had a 40-yarder to open the game, and Lovett countered with a return out to the Cowboy 39. Here's Fred Wyatt, the referee. Clipping. Well, I haven't seen a clipping call all season, I don't think. <laughs> it's almost become an antiquated call, and there's a player down. 55. That is Steve DiAssi. Personal foul. Clip on the return. First down. DiAssi is the injured cowboy. He's a backup linebacker. And uh, just a mammoth support man on goal line defenses. Dr. Pat Evans and Dr. Marvin Knight you see at the left-hand side of the screen, who has been the cowboy position since their uh, beginning in 1960. Are out to help the Aussie as he uh, heads over to the sideline. With the penalty, the ball has moved back inside the 10 yard line. And Tom Landry, with much the same look he had last week, even though it was 44 0, never had, changes. Had that same look when we had him in Atlanta, had the same look when we had him in Philadelphia. Matter of fact, saw him fishing the other day, had the same look when he was fishing. I guess that's just his look. 429 to go first quarter. Eagles start from their own 11. Haddix and Jackson in the backfield. Jaworski sends Mike Quick, followed by Everson Wall to the right side. Ernest Jackson out to the 13-yard line. He's not a big man, 5'9", 206. And I know, Terry, when you asked him last night to describe himself, he didn't think of himself in terms of a long distance Well, runner. you know what he did? When I, when I gave him my de definition of great, you know, a person that reminds you of no one else, and that's a pretty good line, you know, he looked at me and he said, I like that. I don't remind myself of anyone. I'm my own kind of runner, but I'm an aggressive, hard runner, and that's the one thing that he did say. 5'9", 206, and we hit the four-minute mark of the first quarter. 7-3, Dallas leads. There are no flags. The handoff goes to Diossi. Or Michael Haddix, rather. I, I said Diossi because I'm looking down at the, at the injured player. Well, Vern, don't be looking at Diossi now. We've got 26 running with I understand. The <laughs> Herman Hunter and Greg Garrity check in on third down again. Now, I think what's going to happen, they're going to run this football and attempt it, but I look for, for Jaworski later on to start doing those play actions on first down to get those quick passes out of there to get these guys off of it. Jaworski set what was then his career high, 384 yards or 380 yards, first meeting between these two teams. Out of the shotgun, no blitz. Pass is bobbled by Hunter. Had the first down at the 25. And that was a catchable ball. Hunter threw a touchdown pass on a flea flicker to open the game last week in St. Louis. Well, he came out and made a nice move. He was wide open. And if there was anything I could see wrong with that was the fact that Jaworski probably anticipated Hunter and then threw the football too hard. See, folks, he's wide open. And what Ron did was force it because of the pressure. Mike Horan, number two, who has been inconsistent this season but had a good last couple of weeks, will kick it away to Bill Bates. Nice high kick. That's a dandy. Bates with no fair catch at the 37. Rich Cranach, number 52, hits him at the 44. And Dave Little also part of the tackle. But the Cowboys enjoy good field position. If the play stands, there is a flag down. No, nope, we are told now there is no flag and timeout has been called. Okay. Dallas Cowboys started off five wins, one defeat, and that's when they were at their best. The 392 yard per game average, 27 points, and 24 takeaways. In the last five games during which they've gone two and three, they have scored an average of only 12 points a game. They've started on a new string now. They were shut out last week for the first time in 218 games. Here's a play fake. Left side. Tony Hill. And speaking of strings after that nine-yard game, that is Hill's 56th consecutive game in which he has caught a pass. He is too shy 
of the club record held by Drew Pearson. Now, this is good offense. You come out, you run early once or twice. You know you're playing a team that is ranked 25th in the NFL against the run. So you come out, and you run, run, run. Then everybody says, well, we're going to stop the run. So they stop it now. Play action. Five-yard throw, 10, 11-yard gain. That's a good job by White. In this case, it's a gain of nine. It'll be second down and one. Again, they are in Philadelphia country with a 7-3 lead and 2.14 to go in the first quarter. Dorsett taking the circular route out to the left side. James Jones can throw it, and he's going to throw it deep for Dorsett, who is covered in the pass is intercepted. Again, it is Wes Hopkins. That is his third interception against the Cowboys in five quarters. They tried the gadget play. Jones and Hopkins never bit on the pitch out. Well, the one thing about it, that's the first time we've seen Jones run the play. So if you're going to run a play where you have a gadget, why not let Jones run with the football? Now, right now, Jones has done nothing all day long. Now you come out and you throw it to him. And now Jones, that's terrible for him. Now Jones cranks it up, and the man was covered. And then Hopkins, 48, who's a great free safety. Hey, that's a piece of cake. He goes over and makes the interception. But, Vern, what I'm saying is set it up. Run that play two or three times. You know, let him run with the football. Now when they come up, now throw it to him. Let him throw the football down. It will work then. That is his sixth interception of the season. Three have come against Dallas. First down, 10 Eagles. Play fake Jaworski. He's being chased out of the tackle. Now he'll freelance it. And slides to a stop at the 25-yard line. Wanted to go deep for Kenny Jackson, number 81. But Jackson well covered by Ron Fellows. There's Wes Hopkins, who became an All-American on this very field while playing four years for the Southern Methodist University Mustangs. Well, Wes Hopkins, 48, is a free safety, or as the folks out there listening, a weak safety, meaning he always lines up opposite the tight end in the secondary. But in this formation, a weak safety actually is the support guy. He's the guy they like to send up there to make the tackles on the line of scrimmage. 1.18 to go first quarter, 7-3, Dallas lead. Second down and three. Jackson, no. John Dutton is the man who said no, number 78. Mike Hegman is also in on the tackle. Dutton now in his 12th year. Out of the University of Nebraska. Our score is 7-3. Elsewhere, Houston hung on to defeat San Diego by two. The Oilers break the losing streak down in the Astrodome. So much for that vote of confidence. St. Louis, an early lead over the Giants. And Kansas City, an early lead over Indianapolis. Third down and two. There are, there's a flag down. Nevertheless, it's good night, Herman Hunter. Touchdown. Now, against whom is the penalty? Jaworski, number 58, Hegman. Touchdown. That was Mike Hegman. And Hunter's touchdown stands. We're going to look at it. Hegman, top right of your screen. Boy, he was trying to get back, Vern, and evidently they say, hey, you did not get back, and Hunter cups inside on a simple little pitch, and it's just a sprint between him and, and Downs, and there's no foot, there's no, there's no race at all. He goes all the way, 74 yards, but Hegman knew he was offside. Jaworski evidently changed the snap count and got Hegman to jump before he could get back. 74-yard touchdown. That is the first touchdown by a running back other than Jackson that has been scored by Philadelphia this year. Ernest Jackson has scored two. Jaworski has scored two. Hunter has got the fifth of the season. My, my man, my <laughs> man studied. He studied. <laughs> hey. Okay. Well, I know they're on their edge of the seat. We need to. We need to settle down. Just a little bit, yes. Yeah. Just boom. Here's the extra point by Paul McFadden out of the hold of Ron Jaworski. Unfortunately, missed this when it was live, and there it is in replay, and he still made it. Seven. Uh, 
10-7. Philadelphia took the lead. There's the kick by Paul McFadden. Another short kick. Levette from the 15. It's also a short return of six yards. David Little makes the tackle number 89. So the Cowboys come back on the field, trailing once again by three points at 14 seconds to go in the first quarter. In addition to everything else, Terry, that uh, was only the second time this season the Eagles had scored a touchdown in the first quarter. Well, nothing like changing old habits, huh? And bringing on some new ones. Hunter scored for a touchdown last week, or threw for a touchdown, and now he has run 74 yards for a touchdown. First down, 10 from the 21. Newsom going left. Good block. A gain of almost 15 yards out of bounds to 36. Wes Hopkins with the tackle. Want to welcome those of you who are watching Tampa Bay's overtime win over Detroit. Donald Igwebuike's field goal and Steve Young's first start as the Buccaneers win their second of the season. Our score is 10-7. Paul McFadden's field goal gave Philadelphia a 3-0 lead. Dorsett countered with a three-yard touchdown. And then Herman Hunter has just run 74 yards to put Philadelphia back on top with seven seconds to go first quarter. First and 10, Dallas to the 36, and White to throw. Looks in Cosby's direction. He's in trouble. Sack. Greg Brown, number 98. Well... Brown's had eight and a half sacks this year, now nine and a half. The thing about this play was a short step as you see Danny, five short stop steps. Now he's trying to find the man over the middle as you can see Newsom is covered. Then when he moves out of the pocket, Brown finally does sack him. That is the end of the first quarter as the Eagles trying to sweep Dallas for the first time since 1964 have a 10-7 lead over the Cowboys. Three quarters to come from Texas Stadium. Be back in a moment. Second quarter, Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw. Second down and 20. And Danny White goes deep right side, throws it away over Mike Renfro's head. And out of the reach of Roynell Young, number 43. That will bring up a third and a bunch. Marion Campbell. Once a defensive coordinator for this Philadelphia team when they went to the Super Bowl at the end of the 1980 season. Mike Reichenbach comes out. It'll be third down and 19. Dallas trailing by three. Carl Poe has come in as a third wide receiver. And he lines up to the right side. From the shotgun. Four-man rush. White with time. Deep down the middle. Overthrows Renfro. Put it right in the middle of the zone. Our score is Philadelphia 10, the Cowboys 7, 14 minutes and 49 seconds to go in the first half of play. Now, let's go for the special report from CBS News.
Uh, thanks to Bob Schieffer for that report. And while we were away for the special report, Everson Walls just picked off his eighth pass interception of this year. On first down and 10, Ron Jaworski with a play fake after a 54-yard Dallas punt. Tried to go deep. Walls waited on the pass, Terry. Had no problem picking it off and returning 20 yards. Well, this was a poorly thrown pass by, by Jaworski because Jackson was well covered by Walls. Actually, he should have just thrown it out of bounds. First down, 10. That's the first Jaworski pass interception by the Cowboys this season. Dorsett spins, picks up one. And it is also the 27th Dallas interception of this year. Dorsett gained 100 yards on 20 carries the first time these two teams met, and that's the last time he's been at 100 or better. Well, they, had, they really haven't run the football that well. They've thrown the football well, Vern, but they haven't really established a running game going into this game today against this Philadelphia team. They thought they could run the football well, and they've done so, so early, far, early so far in the first quarter and here in the second. Difference in the game is a 74-yard touchdown run by Herman Hunter. Draw play. Ken Newsom up the middle to the 24-yard line. That's a yard short of the first down. It'll be third and one. Herman Edwards, number 46, made the tackle. Well, when you think a football team is going to rush or pass, or one of the things that Danny White does is comes back and gives the ball to Newsom on a draw. Good job that time by the guards, Titan Soar and Peterson. They kick their man out, and then Newsom blast up through him inside. Almost got the first down. Needs a what? Well, got third, third, one and a half, third and two. Rich Freynack came in there and made the tackle on that. Double tight end set for the Eagles. Fred Cornwell and Cosby and Phil Posderick has also checked in. Third down one from the 24. Dorsett, nice little move. Guards to the right, comes back to the left. And that should be enough to move the chains. One of the things you see so often in the National Football League, Vern, is people copying other people's offense. We used to put that little wing back in motion as a tight end, Randy Grossman, in the Super Bowl against you guys. Well, when you were the Cowboys guys. And we ran that and ran it well. And now you see this time Cornwell comes inside, had the door set. Now he went up inside to try to get off that block, but wasn't anything there. Cut outside, got first down. First down at the 22-yard line. 12.30 to go in the half, 10-7, Philadelphia leads. Door set. Wes Hopkins hit him shoulder high. There was a lot of taunting between Dorsett and some of these Eagle defenders in that first game. And, and Tony said after the game, I apologize to them and to my fans. I can't believe I let myself get involved in well, that. Well, they got very ashamed of it. Well, when you get out there and you get the tempers going in a heated game like that against an arch rival, those things happen. Tony was embarrassed, so he apologized. Second down, six. 10-7, Philadelphia leads. We are 11-49 away from the end of the half. Two-step drop, quick flip, Renfro, first down. Good catch. Excellent catch. Well, the, the thing that's so outstanding about this play is not only the catch by Renfro, but the pass by White as Gary Cobb was blitzing once again, a linebacker from the outside, type right of your screen. Herman Edwards, 46, stayed inside. Renfro went outside. Nice job by a quarterback and receiver. Once again, they blitz those linebackers. Once again, they get burned. And the Cowboys say they, from their graphs and their statistical studies, the Eagles blitz only 4%. They don't have graphs. They have computers. Computers, right. First down at the 11. Newsom, lumbering left. And getting knocked out of bounds inside the five. No, he is not out of bounds. Wes Hopkins again with a tackle. What we're seeing is a lot of, you notice that move by Danny as he came out to the left, turned around, went back deep, then turned around and gave it back to Newsom. Look at this. Now there's a little cross-buck action. A little toss, fake toss, come back. Now Newsom, look at that long, gangly stride. He is lumbering, as you said, out to the left, and Hopkins comes up. Number 48 makes the stop. Hey, that guy plays tight to the line of scrimmage. You think you give a play action and pop it in behind it. Hopkins I'm talking about. Let's see if that's what they might have in mind on second down and three from the four. Well, enough room here, Byrne. Okay. Door set. That's short of the first down. It'll bring up a third and one from two. Rich Cranach, number 52, made the tackle. 
These are aggressive linebackers. Cranach, as you see there, is a backup inside linebacker as well as outside, and they're real aggressive today. We're seeing them blitz both Cobb and Reggie Wilkes, both outside linebackers. That time, they brought Cranach up, and they sent him inside. He did a good job of filling and making the stop. Fred Cornwell, number 85, and Phil Posderick have come in. Cowboys like to play action to their tight end in places like this. Third down and two, and they can get the first down without the touchdown. No play action this time. That's Dorsett, who will be close to the first down. They needed to get to the one, and Fred Wyant says, stop the clock and we'll measure. Well, that's twice now. Once I said play action, now you jumped in there and said, I'll play head coach. You said play action. <laughs> also, the Philadelphia Eagles are thinking play action, but they say, hold it. They're going to do something different. The Cowboys now are running the football in these short goal line situations. That is going to call for the measurement. Fred Wyatt will separate everybody. Well, I know one thing. If we'd only scored 23 points in the last three games, shoot, I'd go for it if we didn't make it. Let's see what Landry has in mind. Yep, he's going to go for it. He'll keep set the end on the bench. Marion Campbell signals in the defense, and that is Campbell's responsibility. He calls the defensive signal. There it is. Round him up, little elbow inside. We don't have any idea. That probably means with the elbows into the hip, tackles pinch. Everyone pinching down inside. Linebackers stealing outside. Let's see if that's what they do. White calls for quiet from the sellout crowd. They respond because it's a hometown team. Splitbacks behind Danny White on fourth and inches. Play fake. White, nobody open. Pulls up, fires it deep. Coffee! This offense is not, has not been imaginative, and it hasn't been exciting. We've been saying play action, play action, and I'd be doggone with five inches to go if they don't run a play action. No one, everyone's covered, and then finally Cosby, smart wide receiver that he is, tight end, eases back inside, gets open, and White, outstanding job of finding him. <laughs> Can you believe that? On fourth and inches, here's Seth the end. It's been a teeter-totter. Here in the first half, the Cowboys having fallen behind, now go on top. Interesting, huh, fellas? Floorboard down here, so we don't have any official. You got to duck under. It's really terrific. Another part of the class act. I can't believe that. I don't know. You can't see anything. Can I do it now? Okay. All Let right. Terry take it right out there. Okay. Hold it, T. Hold it. All right. Now you're going to check. Cornwell's coming in motion. He's going to come upside and block. Newsom's there. He dives up inside. Same play they ran a while ago. Doors, I mean, White comes out, fakes, drops back, and then Cornwell. That coffee goes down and bingo right across the middle, wide open. Watch this. Mike never got that out. There's the play action. He sets up, quite it is. No one open. And then finally calls the good job of maneuvering it for the six. Back live. Kickoff return. Herman Hunter breaks it back. Fumble. 20. Fumble. Eagles, I think, get it back. Joel Williams, number 59, should be the body at the bottom of the pile. After they get through on stack. Philadelphia does retain possession of the ball, but back at the 22-yard line. Does that kind of a play that Landry sent in on fourth and inches surprise you? A it bit? does surprise me because I had anticipated play action. They've done it so much down there. And the thing that you've got to admire about Landry is he knows they do it a lot. They had a tendency, they being the Eagles, that they play action. And I'd be doggone with five inches to go if he doesn't run. That's a very gambling play, but it paid off. He is talking with Jim Myers, his assistant head coach. I like, the sidelines. I like the call. I think it's kind of exciting. I would have loved to have been running it. 9.36 to go in the half. Haddix and Jackson behind Ron Jaworski in the eye. 14-10 Dallas now. 
Quick opener to Michael Haddix, and he is out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. High score, 14-10. Dallas leads it. Let's go to New York for this update with Brent Musburger. And I would bet Brent that Forrest Gregg is going to work on special teams next week. There's a handoff to Ernest Jackson, and he doesn't get much at all. As Mike Hegman, number 58, was there to supply the defensive thrust. That brings up a third down at about six. As you look at Hegman, 58, at Jackson talking to him, you know, they almost had, you know, they were talking about putting him in a plastic bag and, and icing him down because of his style. He, he takes such a pounding as a running back and is so sore. Actually, talking to him yesterday, Vern, he said he was still sore coming into this game today. Third down, officially five. Greg Garrity and Herman Hunter in the lineup. Shotgun formation. See if the Cowboys have the blitz on. They do not. Stunts by the defensive line. The pass is caught for the first down by Quick. Out to the 35. And Victor Scott, number 22, makes the tackle. Well, you'd think the Cowboys obviously have learned their lesson against, against these Eagles. Last time they blitzed them in Philadelphia, boy, Ron just burned them. Now today, the Cowboys aren't even fake it burned. They're not even showing blitz. They're just dropping back and playing zones, and they're running those little quick slants and, and in routes to their wide receivers, which are good patterns to run versus zones. That third down conversion on third and five gives the Eagles new life. 7.45 to go in the first half. Jaworski with a bruised right shoulder. Happened in the third period of the game against St. Louis. Now comes the linebacker blitz, and Spagnola makes the catch in front of Dexter Clinchdale. John Spagnola, number 88, had a big day the first time these two teams met. Has been kind of quiet here recently. Well, the, Vern, the reason is they that they've come out and started running the football. The Eagles were running the football. Now the thing we're seeing is a personality developed by the Eagles. They said, okay, run, run, run. We've done no good, right? And then George says, forget this garbage. Let's throw it now. Two passes in a row, two completions. 7.05 to go in the half. Dallas leads at 14-10. Sellout crowd in Irving. High formation. Mike Quick in motion, number 82. Fullback Haddix for about four near the 50-yard line. Jim Jeffco, number 77, made the tackle. That's one of those phony plays. When, when I used to play, I used to always, if you had a big play, you'd come back, kind of get your breath and say, okay, let's try this little shot as we look at Hacks. Little play up the middle, four or five yards, maybe two or three yards. That just gets your breath. Now he's coming out, bingo, down the field we go. Is that what you expect? Well, that's what I would do. <laughs> okay. I, I'm up here next to you. That's what I would do. But you've been down there before. Right. I love being down there in this position. Let's see if Jaworski has that in mind. Second down and seven. Nope. Ernest Jackson, Jeff go to high. And there was another tackler down low to supply the stop to Ernest Jackson. Jackson played his collegiate football at Texas A&M, was an eighth-round draft choice of San Diego, and traded in the offseason, having rushed for more yards than any runner in the AFC last year. Came to the Eagles in September. Said he was surprised by the trade. Said he was hurt by the trade. And you take that he was a little bitter that they didn't respect his accomplishment, accomplishments in San Diego. Heck, the guy was all pro. Third down and seven. Garrity and Hunter back in on third down. And again, the Cowboys have only a five-man rush. A pass is dropped by Herman Hunter. That's the second catchable pass that he's been unable to hang on to, and Jaworski was in the face of pretty good pressure. You're going to see a fake blitz this time as you're going to see Bates up on the inside with the middle with the linebacker giving Ron a fake blitz look. See, 40 Bates upside, now clink scale 47 on the outside, both of them up inside faking it. Now, Bates really is not rushing. His man blocks, he just releases and goes up in there, but Hunter dropped the ball. Mike Horan on the punt. Bill Bates has dropped back to the 10-yard line. That stuff would drive you crazy, won't it, trying to figure it out? Well, what you said, you said that they, you thought they'd fake blitz a lot today. Fake it and drop out. Fake it and drop out, then go ahead and run. Well, that's a man. And a fair catch call. Now the ball is limping and will be down at the one-yard line. <laughs> Almost. That thing was a hot potato. David Little. 
<laughs> well, he was in a similar position last week that Chicago intercepted a a pass against the Cowboys. Here's Bates calling for the fair catch. So you got to really wave that baby now. You got to get that right arm up there and show the world. Now, 59. <laughs> he says, hold it, where's that ball? There it is. <laughs> then finally, Lil and Jesse Finn fighting over it. I couldn't tell the difference. If it was Penn. Philadelphia. I thought it was. 5.23 to go first half. Cowboys pin back at their own three-yard line first down 10. They have a 14-10 lead. And off to Newsom out to the seven-yard line over left tackle Titan Sir and Chris Schultz opening the hole. But Anthony Griggs was there to fill it, number 58. Newsom spent a couple of weeks on the bench with an injury. He had uh, become injured in the Houston game and has really had what he himself says is a so-so season so far. Well, he really wants to run the football more. Of course, you know, with Dorsett, he's at, you know, that's the guy that's going to run it, but today looks like they're decoying Dorsett and giving the ball off to Newsom. Under five minutes and a half, Hill comes to the left side. Danny White will throw it from the end zone. Will the ball to Cosby. First down at the 23. It was that kind of play they were trying to complete against Chicago last week when Hampton knocked the ball up and Richard Dent intercepted the touchdown. This is a good job by Cosby. White comes back and Reichenbach, 55, the linebacker, has caused to be man for man, but he falls down. See him fall down? And then good job by Cosby getting his hands up because White had that football right in his face and he got those big mitts up there, grabbed the ball, and Ellis, 24, made the stop. Actually, he caught that in self-defense, Vern. 4-10 to go in the half. 14-10, Dallas Legion. Two-step drop. Right side. Tony Hill makes the catch again out across the 25 near the 26. Roy L. Young and Reggie Wilkes, number 51, was out there to help on the tackle. Elsewhere in the National Football League today, the Giants now leading St. Louis in the second quarter by seven. Giants go into today's game tied. Ron Brown's two kickoff returns have given the Rams a seven-point lead. And Denver has uh, gone in front of the Raiders 14-7. to seven. Now there's a player injured. As Tom Landry looks on, one of the Eagles has been shaken up and timeout has been called. The injured Eagle is Greg Brown, number 98. Nine. <clears throat> okay. Greg Brown got a finger stuck in his eye. He is on the bench, and Tom Struthers, number 93, has taken his spot. Doesn't look like it's anything serious. The Cowboys have a second down and six from their own 27-yard line. 3.25 to go in the half. 14-10 Dallas, they go from the eye with Dorsett the deep back. Dorsett to the block for Newsom, but that doesn't open much of a hole. The ball was down, so that is not a fumble. And the Cowboys will face a third down and about the same. The Cowboys are trying something unique now in terms of blocking the all-pro safety Wes Hopkins. What they wanted to do was send Renfro in motion, 82, and pass up to strong safety, 24, Ray Ellis. Now, that's a no-no, but they felt like they had to get to Hopkins and block him. You know, that kind of doesn't make sense, pass up one guy to get to another. But that's how much respect they have for 48. The free safety, Wes Hopkins, run right by 24. That violates the basic principle of football, doesn't it? Well, that's all I was taught it does, Vern, but, you know. That is something the Cowboys are trying today not on passing plays but on running down that's a first down to tony hill at the 38 yard line as hill makes another grab he came in with 907 yards or 909 rather and 62 catches a career high well you search the field all day long in situations like this trying to find where you can get a receiver man for man herman hunter 46 i mean hunter Edwards right there, 46, man for man on Hill, just drives him down, breaks outside, and then gets the first down. First down, 10 for the Cowboys. That is their 10th of the first half. They lead it 14-10 with 2.31 to go. That moves the ball now from the four-yard line. Dorsett coming left. In trouble. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all she wrote. Anthony Griggs, number 58, made the tackle. 
you got two linebackers, you got Reichenbach, and you got Griggs, and you got the free safety. You had three people up on the line of scrimmage, and not one defensive lineman outside with your guards pulling. So that tells you how aggressive, as you look at 58 Griggs, how aggressive the Eagle linebacking group are. They really pursuit, 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 and you got to take advantage of that bird by coming out now, play action, or do those little quick passes that Danny's been doing. And you might have noticed that Greg Brown is back in the lineup. Cowboys talk it over. Two-minute warning. We're gone? Yeah. No comment, Burn. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big that's, that's Too controversial. Got you. Tom Landry did call a play action pass on fourth and five inches from the two yard line, but other than that, they've been pretty conservative. It's a very conservative offense. Little flips outside, little short, quick hook routes, nothing deep crossing down the middle, none of that. Very conservative game plan in the first half. Would you change that? Well, hey, you're asking me, I would, but I don't coach this football. No, but you again have played it. Second down and nine. And they're going to throw on second and nine, and Danny White wants to go deep. There you go. Must have heard you. Mike Renfro, first down at the 45. You have a linebacking group that's setting at eight yards, and you got a secondary that's another 15 yards behind them, and there's a 20-yard gap there. The Cowboys got a man in that gap and hit him. 16-yard gain, no huddle. From the 45 on first down, White, left side, into the flat. They'll have to use a timeout now at the 40-yard line if they want to conserve the clock, and they have called timeout. Well, you really didn't have to call a timeout here. This is... This is where you had a minute uh, 38 left. You had enough time to go up to the line of scrimmage, set your offensive team, and call a play at the line of scrimmage and get it off and save save a timeout. <laughs> oh, he's breathing deep now. <laughs> um, it's okay. What are you, you going to try to get a shot of? Oh, the shot you talked about last night. Oh, yeah. Uh, when they're on From, defense. Well, we had a good shot earlier, remember? Yeah. What do we got? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, okay. it, it'll work. It'll work with the Cowboys at your back. There's Use Thurman the with his new hairdo. Come on out with him. Okay. Boy, when, you, when you're asking me what, what I do. <laughs> That's why we pay you. See the leader of Thurman's thieves, Dennis Thurman, just walk away from Clink Scale and Walls. Dennis Thurman has a new haircut. Said he wanted to look more like Marvin Hagler, and he shaved his head yesterday. Second down and five. Shotgun formation. Dorsett, it was on that play the Cowboys scored in the first game up in Philadelphia, and this time it goes nowhere. So now having used the timeout to call that draw well, play. It's a great time to take a timeout and get no game. <laughs> I can't that's understand right. it. Now they've got a third and five. And they go without the huddle. White with time. Nobody open. Greg Brown chasing. Flag is down. White is too. And so is the ball. There's a flag in the offensive backfield. So having used the timeout with 1.38 to go, the Cowboys call the draw play, get nothing. And now there's a penalty on an incomplete pass. Fred Wyatt will let us know what's going on. Illegal hands to the face mask, number 91. That is Reggie White, the Minister of Defense. Talking with Tom Rafferty and arguing his case, two years in the USFL, Marion Campbell looking on. I can tell you right now, Reggie, you're not going to win it. Just might as well get on back over there. Reggie White is uh, nine and a half sacks since he joined this team after the season started. And he'd best be careful. He's going to get an unsportsmanlike conduct call. Well, Marion Campbell's ob obviously upset about that. So, you know, I, I don't know what he did. Evidently, you know, it could have been a head slap. You can take that right hand and hit somebody up alongside the helmet. Well, that's illegal. It used to be it was legal, but no longer is it. But he said in the face. So I don't know what that is. What a, what a big call on an incomplete third down pass. The Cowboys now have a first down at the 25. From the shotgun. Into the flat goal set with Rafferty in front. And he and Rafferty run right into each other. That's mass confusion. 
They will go without the huddle again as Tom Landry looks on. 50 seconds to go. Danny's trying to hit the wide receiver down there at 15 yards, but he was covered and threw it out in the flat for Dorsett with a guard lead. But, hey, that was just people running all over one another. Clock shows 40 seconds to go. Looks deep for James Jones. Touchdown is deep for Cosby. 23 yards. Second catch for six for Doug Cosby today. Nothing conservative about that throw. You gotta ask, how does this guy get open so much when you got these fleet wide receivers and a 6'6", 280-pound, 260-pound, 200 whatever he is, tied in? Danny's looking to the left. Now he comes back to the right and thinks he has healed. Then all of a sudden, down the middle, it's caused him wide open as he runs right by number 48. Gee whiz, that's, that's Wes Hopkins. Septian will try and make it a 21 to 10 game with 34 seconds to go. So Reggie White infraction turns out to be the big play in this drive. And Cosby gets his second touchdown in the first half. We'll talk it over with offensive backfield coach Jim Schaffner or quarterback coach Jim Schaffner. Al LeVan is the running back coach for the team. 21-10 coming up this Thursday, the Cowboys back home against the St. Louis Cardinals at 3.30 Eastern time. It begins with the NFL today. Dallas with home games not only today against Philadelphia, but also against St. Louis, and then the 15th of December, the New York Giants. So they have division opponents at home, and that game Thursday is another critical game in the NFC Eastern Division race. Cardinals, of course, are playing the Giants today and were trailing 10-3 last year. And the Cowboys up 21-10. Cosby, this guy does a does a good job of getting loose, finding the open areas for such a big man. Just a natural knack of getting in. Look at that, 11 plays, 96 yards, with a 23-yard pass to Cosby. Once they found Renfro across midfield, they called timeout, and then the big, big play was on third down. An incomplete pass, but they caught Reggie White for the penalty to give the Cowboys new life in the 23. Except the end says, I'm ready. <laughs> Herman Hunter at the six. And out of the 25. Steve Diossi, a part of the wrestling match with Vince Albritton, number 36. And we've got 28 seconds to go in the first half. Coming up at the half, Brent Nerve with scores and highlights of all the games in the National Football League here in week 12. And I think you heard Brent say that this has been the wild and wackiest week yet. So it'll be fun to have Brandon Irv update us with everything that is going on in just a few moments. The Swamp Fox, Marion Campbell. I found it fascinating when his team was one and four. He went back and researched teams that had started out that way and made the playoffs. And he found about five or six, used that as an inspiration for the Eagles. They are six and five now, but there's a drop, and that's another one for Herman Hunter. That's three. Well, he talked about the, the as we look at Ron Dwarf, we, he talked about the, the Raiders and when they started out one and five, and he talked about the Steelers, who started out one and five and ended up going to the playoffs. So he researched it and said, hey, you know, we've got a chance here. He said his football team was an improving football team, getting better week in and week out, and he was pretty excited about their chances of possibly getting into those playoffs. And if they can win this ball game. They really are in great shape because of the four contending teams in the NFC East. Philadelphia has probably the easiest schedule. They get Minnesota twice, Washington at home. They do have a trip to San Diego. But this is a big one. Here's Jaworski going deep, and there's a big catch. Kenny Jackson, number 81. Fox shows 15 seconds to go. First down at the 48 following the 28-yard catch. Good job by Jaworski of getting that football over the over the cornerback's head and dropping it down into Jackson's hand. And we're talking a, from where Ron was throwing at a 30-yard pass. Look at Fellows, 27. He's dropping deep, and all of a sudden, there's Walls underneath it, and the ball went over Walls' head and underneath Fellows' head and right into the hands of Jackson. Now, Jackson really should have just gotten on out of bounds and saved those seven seconds of jitterbugging back inside. Kenny Jackson caught six passes for 134 yards in the first game. He comes from South River, New Jersey, where he was a high school quarterback. There is a guy on the Cowboy bench who caught a few passes named Drew Pearson. Now a coach who was a quarterback at South River, New Jersey. And there's a guy watching back in Washington, D.C. 
Joe Theismann. Who was also a quarterback at South River High School, and we want to wish Joe the best. Well, I, well, that's not bad, huh? Two of these guys end up being receivers. One of them, of course, stayed to be a, be a quarterback and a doggone good one. I hope old Joe's leg's getting all right. Timeout has been called with 15 seconds to go. There is Tom Landry, and, of course, one of his assistants is Drew Pearson that we mentioned. That is Alan Lowry on the right side of the Cowboy coach. 250, 145, and 6 in his 26th year. You know, one interesting, inter interesting thing about Landry and talking to Schaffner, the offensive uh, coach of the Cowboys, is he said that, that Landry likes multiple defenses and multiple offenses because they challenge his defense, and, he, and it really is very confusing. I'll, I'll talk more about that as this game goes on. From the shotgun, Cowboys threatening the blitz. They are not coming. Back in four. Jaworski goes deep. Intercepted. Picked off by Bill Bates. Bates is up and still running. That is the 28th Cowboy interception of the season. And the second time Jaworski has been picked off today. Take that blitz. It got up inside. The same look they gave the Cowboys. I mean, the uh, Cowboys gave the Eagles early in the year. There's Bates, 40-47 clink scale. Now they drop out into deep zones. Now, Jaworski sees this and tries to fire it in between, but Bates makes a play on the football as he tries to hit Jackson and actually knocks down Vic Victor Scott, 22, and then escapes, finally running the clock out. Well, not running it out, but making a good job of, of getting the football back. There's Bates, Tennessee man. Of the 28th, he has four. And the Cowboys take over with four seconds to go. He and Reggie White of the Eagles were teammates with the Volunteers. And that shall be the final play of the first half. Two touchdown crosses from Danny White to Doug Cosby. And a three-yard touchdown run by Tony Dorsett have propelled the Dallas Cowboys to a 21-10 halftime lead. Okay, great. NFC Eastern Division battle. Philadelphia jumped off to a 3-0 lead. The Cowboys came back, and then they seesawed back and forth before the Cowboys scored two unanswered touchdowns, both catches by Doug Cosby. Terry, we said at the top we didn't know whether Dallas could salvage anything from the train wreck. Apparently, they had found something to work on. <laughs> well, they're playing well. They're playing aggressive. I think they're, they were a little bit tentative with their running attack. They were running well with Newsom. And then finally, in, in, in the end of the, sec of the first half, they started play action, started throwing the football. I think they need to get back to that, but they are on top and, and are playing well. In terms of the defensive scheme, you will recall, those of you who watched the game a month ago, Dallas lived by the blitz and died by it in the fourth quarter. You thought they would fake the blitz a lot today, and I think that's what they've done. Well, you know, they're smart. These are two smart coaches, and uh, Campbell knows that they handled that blitz well last, the first time they played, and Landry knows that they, that they got burned on that baby. It cost them that football game. Coming into this, the Cowboys, I expected them to fake it, and not only did I think they were going to fake it, it looks like the Eagles were prepared for it also because the blitz has not been an apparent issue so far. Only from linebackers have we seen them blitz burn. That's been on first down to support the run. Well, we still have 30 minutes to play here at Texas Stadium. Another sellout crowd gathered on a gloomy November afternoon. Back with a kickoff after this. Okay. On an overcast day, Paul McFadden gets set to kick off for the Philadelphia Eagles to open the third quarter. 
Dallas will have Robert Levette, Todd Fowler, and James Jones deep. Levette, the rookie from Georgia Tech, is the middleman for three. Takes the ball near the sideline. And will stay in that area. Breaks one tackle. Fumble. Fumble. And he's back to the 18. Now Philadelphia says they have got it. Doyle Williams pointing that Philadelphia has recovered that fumble. There's also a flag down. And Dwayne Giles, number 53, is down on the bottom of that stack. Well, if it's any indication, by the way, that the Eagles are acting, the Eagles have indeed recovered that football. Now the umpire's saying down, it's down. So let's see. Face mask. Face mask on the Eagles. That may not affect the recovery, if indeed it is a Philadelphia recovery. Well, guess what? We're going to have a convention. No, what happens is you got a penalty here, face mask, but you've got a change of possession, so I'd give Philadelphia the football if they recovered it and go ahead and penalize them for face mask. Well, how's that That sound? sounds logical. Sounds good to me. That's what I'd do. Face mask, number 67, re-kick. Five-yard penalty. <laughs> what a break for Dallas. 15-yard penalty, re-kick. Oh. Okay, so it's a face mask, but they're not going to give him the ball. They're going to penalize him 15 yards. Now we're looking at, gee whiz. Jerry Ferry. 67, Ferry. There's the face mask right there. Boy, he's pulling him all over the place. And they were totally unaware of the battle going on for the football, so that wipes out a fumble recovery by the Eagles. Well, you know what I'm, what I'm questioning is, had they recovered the football and then Ferry goes and commits the penalty? So this is how you look at it. Now, this is what Campbell said. Did we get the football first and then the penalty occur? If so, then it should be their football, and then Philadelphia should be penalized for the 15 yards, but they should have possession of the football. Campbell is still pleading his case. Well, I would, too. Hey, we're talking a close game here. We're talking a close division. I'd plead everything I had doubt about. Hey, they're still not sure of this. Look at this. Now we got the back judge over there. Ted Marcher Broder, the offensive coordinator, he's out on the field. See, this is this is now now this is now Landry's calling a guy. This is evidently what they're discussing. Was there an exchange of possession? Was it close possession? Right. Yes. talk to somebody else <laughs> now you're going to see the return of that's coming up the field now he's going to do a little juking inside and a little juking outside now the tight end comes over david little now there's the, the football is not loose and there there is, is the penalty okay now i'm going to tell you something whatever they call they can't go wrong because i saw it again face mask against philadelphia on the run back, Dallas's ball to be penalized from the spot of the fumble. Well, that's a compromise. That's uh, totally different than the original inter interpretation. And they, I think, Terry, and I'm getting a little bit out of my own field here, but <laughs> hey. I think they're saying that the that the recovery had not yet taken place at the time of the infraction. Well, what, and what I was trying to say was it was so close, even as we have these monitors and we look at it, the face mask is there, the ball is on the ground, we lose sight of the football, so I don't know had he, had they recovered the football and then Ferry had the, had the holding call, so who knows, we couldn't tell. Obviously, Ferry thinks it's crazy. Watch again at the fumble and then almost a simultaneous face mask call. All right. Now, Little comes in. He hits it first. Freynek knocks the ball out. Now, the ball's on the ground. Now, there's the face mask. Doggone near simultaneous. I, I tell you. Somebody call Solomon. We need him. <laughs> this now, conversation has not concluded. Jerry 
Gary Bergman is over there. Then Marcia Broda. Bergman and Marcia Broda are talking. Now that's what, that's what the Eagles were saying. The Eagles were saying what I said. The Eagles were saying we had the football, then we got the penalty. And, the, and what the ref was saying is no way. The fumble was well, the fumble occurred, the penalty happened, and then bingo. Then the, then the exchange of possession. Having changed their interpretation, you might have heard Jerry Bergman say, no, the face mask happened before the fumble recovery. First down, 10, Dallas at the 32. Dorsett up the middle. That's a gain of two. Now for an update and a special report. Let's go to New York and this report from CBS News. Thank you. We're at our best right now, huh? <laughs> Sly Fox. See, see, I thought he was serious. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can see it and I can hear him. Yeah. Hey, Chuck, how do we handle that, that, that penalty deal? Stand by. Stand by. and Cowboys had a first down and 10 on the first down pass play. Danny White finds Tony Hill while we were away for that, uh, that tragic news from Charles Osgood in New York. The Cowboys did manage to pick up a first down. They squirted out a first down by inches on third down and one. And then uh, the play we just had as we came back live, Tony Hill caught Danny White's pass. That, by the way, is the 10th pass in succession that Danny White has completed the club record is 12 in a row. He's only two away from it. Danny White is now 14 of 16 for 132 yards after the last pass completion. To the 40-yard line, Timmy Newsom. Philadelphia had given up 456 yards on the ground in the last two games, including 237 last week. And it was thought that Dallas would be able to run the ball well. That was Dorsett instead of Newsom on the last carry. Well, the thing that's so different from the Cowboy running attack as opposed to the Cardinals is the fact that the, that Dorsett is a slashing sprinter type runner as opposed to the power runners that the Eagles have faced. And so there, therein lies the difference. It'll be second down and six. Dallas leads at 21-10, opening moments of the third quarter. Backs in the eye, two wide receivers to the right side. That's a busted play. Dorsett will have to freelance. And will use yardage all the way back to the 45. 
obvious from the point of the snap that things were not right. Well, sometimes you have now. Look at see, Gary Cobb and Dorsett going after it. I don't know if they're going after it or what, but this is a mix-up. You can see as Danny comes out, Newsom actually is in Danny's way. Newsom should have gone over Danny's right hip. Now, that interrupts the entire play. Now you see White 91 chasing. Look at him mirror Dorsett like a cutting horse, cutting in there, setting right in front, and makes a tackle. I like that analogy, cutting horse. You don't know anything about cutting horses. You got that right. Third down. White has completed 10 in a row. The Cowboys excellent on third down conversion. Four-man rush. White deep right side. Oh. Block. There goes the string, and that ball was catchable. Well, if there's been one complaint about Hills, it's the fact that, that he has not had made the big, tough catches. That time he comes inside, the football was thrown on his left hip. Should have caught the football. Top of your screen, you can see Hill coming down. Plants and comes inside as Royal Young, Ronell Young is inside, and there's that ball hits him right in the head. He, he should have caught that football. I mean, you're gonna drop him. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sitting here getting on the guy, but that ball should have been caught. Evan Cooper back to return Mike Saxon's punt. Cooper waits at the 10 yard line. There has been a lot of criticism of Tony Hill in the media and among his teammates here for not catching a, what could have been a touchdown pass last week. Oh, great job that time by Scott, 22, of getting down there, protecting the goal line, then knocking that football out on the four-yard line. That's a 41-yard kick for Mike Saxon in his first year as the Cowboy punter. Now, if we come back and you want to remember the, the film they took home? Yeah. I talked yeah. to Saxon. He, I said, how much of that film did you look at? He said, I looked at a lot. I said, what did you look at? He said, just looking at him a drop, looking at this. And he said, I knew today. He said, Terry, today I am going to punt real well. So that's what he told okay. me. Okay. There's Scott. Look at Scott sitting right there. Boom. Little bump there by number by number 21. Little eat. <laughs> hey. I'm a man with that ego. That punter. Mike Saxon. Saxton? Saxon. Oh, yeah. First year, we're going to punt. San Diego State. <laughs> There's a free agent punter named Mike Saxon. Terry, you had an interesting <laughs> chat with him before the game. But, well, he told me that he said, Terry, I'm going to punt well today. I said, no kidding. He said, yeah, I took film home. I said, what? He said, I took some film home and watched myself kick the football. And he said, I found out that I was dropping the football out too far to the right, causing me to nearly miss the football. And look at that. That's what film preparation will do for you right there. Kicker taking film home. As a result, the Eagles have a first down at their own three-yard line. Split back, and off, Jackson for a couple. Just to complete the Mike Saxon story, He's in his first year as a free agent kicker. He had a, he was drafted by the Lions last year and didn't make the roster. He's from San Diego State. Mike Saxon has bought a home about six blocks from the Cowboy New Headquarters in Dallas. He said, I'll tell you the difference between a free agent punter and a first and second round draft choice. Kevin Brooks and Jesse Penn both drive $40,000 automobiles. I'm driving a moped. <laughs> we all live in the same complex. He said, hey. I drive my moped in between their two cars. <laughs> Second down and seven. Mike Quick. Jaworski to throw from the end zone. Into the flat. Oh, Jackson nice is open. Good job. That time, good pressure by the Cowboys. Coming inside, man for man coverage. Walls on Jackson. Little play action. Drives Jack Jackson. Drove Walls deep. Turned outside. And boy, Jaworski just bang. Powered that football in there. And I'll tell you what, you're talking about driving cars. Folks, I drive an old beat up truck. Mm -hmm. I had to have it repaired. Can't afford a new car. My friend here, Vern Lunkers, took me to play golf a week or so ago. And what does he drive? Nice little Mercedes. So don't, hey, tell me about cars. Don't do that to me. The IRS is listening. <laughs> First and ten. Now blitz. The blitz and all out linebacker blitz. The Warski gets great protection. And Kenny Jackson, silver quick. Is out to the 37 yard line before he is tackled. That's another first down and a gain of 22. One of the things we had seen is not safety blitzes, but linebacker blitzes. There's Hegman on the outside, 
Lockhart on the inside. Notice how Roar now comes up inside. Roar 50 and then Lockhart 56 up inside. Jaworski steps up and hits Jackson, which is wide open. No one there. Now he comes down, picks up the block, and goes outside. 9.50 to go, third quarter. Eagles have moved them from their own three to the 39. Wide receivers left and right. Ernest Jackson going left. Spilled after a two-yard gain. The tackle made by the middle linebacker, Gene Lockhart. Leonard Mitchell gets up, having supplied the block. He's having a long afternoon against Ed Tutal Jones. Elsewhere in the National Football League, with our score 21-10 at the current time, Chicago blanks Atlanta. They're 12-0, 36-0. In overtime, Igwe Buque's field goal gets Tampa Bay at second win. Miami over Buffalo by nine. It'll be second down and seven. No blitz. Jaworski left side. Playscale had slipped as he tried to get out in cover. And Jackson makes the catch and steps out of bounds. Continuing with a rundown of scores, the Jets' Pat Leahy kicks a field goal, and New York defeats New England in overtime in the Meadowlands. 160 yards for Earl Campbell. First time he's been over 100 since he went to New Orleans, and the Saints finally break a six-game losing streak. The rebirth of Earl Campbell. Houston hangs on, and they defeat San Diego well, by that, two. Now, that's a shocker there. And Cleveland defeats Cincinnati with Gary Danielson back to starting quarterback. AFC Central, anybody can win it. Third and one. 21-10, Dallas leads. Jackson. That's going to be real close. Oh, he got it. Second great. effort. He That's sure right. did. Great, great effort that time by Jackson. Initially, he was stopped, kept driving with his legs, and then moved to the left to the outside, picked up the first down. 31 yards on 14 carries for Jackson. He lives in Dallas in the offseason. He's a native of Rosenberg, Texas, down near Houston. Said he moved here last year, and he had to buy 25 tickets for this game. You know, it's funny. He bought a brand-new home in San Diego, and then he got he got traded right off the bat. Said, I've been. I bought a home up there. Had to sell it there. Then he says, now I'm buying me one down here in Dallas. These guys make a lot of money. First down, 10. 21-10, 8-14 to go, third quarter. Down. Safety blitz coming. Offside. Cowboys came across the neutral zone. Heckman said we've got the football, and they probably should have the football when you, you've got eight guys off sides, but they had a delayed safety blitz with downs 26 coming up inside, and they just went offside. There's a flag on the far side of the field, as you might expect. Now, was there motion? Procedure. Oh. Offense. Well, they drew him offside. All right, let's see if we can see. Now, there's Jaworski, obviously changed, go, went to a longer count. The you center, know, Mark Dennard. Dennard, the center. How in the world can a center drop people off sides without giving the quarterback the football? Mark Dennard was the one who moved, number 65. Now, was there a fumble recovery? Apparently not. Apparently not. They're saying it, that it was... There's Dennard looking at him, number six. How can, how can a center snap the football and have a guy off sides? Unless he faked it. Very strange. First down and 15. 21-10, 8-10 to go. Third quarter. Jaworski has a man open. Mike Quick doesn't drop the ball. He hangs on. That's close for a first down. Well, one thing that, that Mike... Mike forgot to do was in, in professional football, if you hit the ground, you can get up and run. And I recall in practicing with the Steelers that once you catch the football and these guys hit the ground, our coaches holler, get up, get up, get up, run. Now see quick. Now Walls has it. Boy, he's wide open. Now that's good extension and a great catch. Now get up. You need another yard for the first down. Get up and get it. As a result, it'll be second down and one. 21-10. Eagles are driving. They've moved from their own three, but they trail by 11. Jackson again. A tough two yards. He might have enough to move the chains. Gene Lockhart First and down. John Dutton make the tackle. Excuse me, partner. You know, talking about quick, I had a nice little chat with him, and I congratulated him. Vern is 99 yards and one foot reception. He reminded me that he actually had another, another foot. And I said, you know something, Mike? 
That is a record that will never be broken, but only be tied. He said, that's right. I am permanently in the record books. And he was, he's a fine young man and outstanding. I even told him, I said, you're really, I like the way you run. You're a beautiful run. I told him that, you know, in case the guy wouldn't talk to me. He did. Said he knew he had the touchdown against Atlanta two feet after he made the catch. Jaworski back to throw again. Deep left side. Caught. Nice catch. Fumble. And then dropped by Spagnola. Now, is it a catch? No, it's incomplete. Here we go again. Now, the, what's going to be ruled here is that Spagnola have the ball in control when both feet hit the ground. If he did not, hey, we got fumble. Spags comes back. Ooh, man, I'm glad that, I mean, that was close. So that brings up a second down. Well, at least we didn't have uh, all the refs out there, you know, talking about it. So that was obviously they figured that it was incomplete. Dave Little comes in as an extra tight end. Jaworski is 9 of 18 for 119 yards. 21-10, 636 to go, third quarter, Cowboys leading. Second down and 10, Philadelphia. Cowboys are coming with all out linebacker blitz. And the pass quickly delivered by Jaworski because he had to is incomplete. Now they've had a tendency now, the Cowboys that is, of running their blitzes on second down and their blitzes have been an all-out linebacker blitz. And you're going to see up inside, it's going to be 56 Lockhart, outside Roar, 58 Hegman. All three linebackers blitzing plus four down linemen is seven. Same thing if you send a safety and keep one linebacker out. So good Aaron Stockner has turned things around and he's shooting the linebackers and keeping the safeties out for coverage. And it's working. Eagles are four of seven on third down conversion. Now Bates and them are faking. Look at Downs and Bates are up inside faking the safety blitz. They're coming. Jaworski across the middle, oh. almost intercepted by Wall. He stepped right in front of Mike Quick. It'll be fourth down. We're going to look at this again, Vern. Up inside. You're going to see, look at the safety. Safety. I'm going to draw him over here because you can't see him. From the outside. One, two, three. And then checking and falling out. And they're going to they're going to lay out. And watch this. Up inside. Here they come. Downs. Clean scale. Outside. Wall, then Walls breaks on the pass. That time they had eight men rushing. And then one guy back covering. Good job by Walls. Mike Horan is on the punt for the third time. Bates waits at the 10. Good drive by the Eagles, however. That goes into the end zone. We'll come back to the 20-yard line. Major Everett did a good job of trying to spike that ball and knock it back. So the Eagles move from their own three to the Cowboy 40, but the drive stalls. Dallas takes over after the punt. They'll have it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Hey, Vern. Yo. You never know. We might get us a car. <laughs> Cowboys lead at 21-10, 6-21 to go third quarter. Dallas held Philadelphia after a fine eagle march, and now Dallas takes over at its very own 20 yard line. Dorsett going left, freelancing and coming back to the right. You might recall, well, our score is 21-10. Let's update you on the scores elsewhere around the National Football League. Final score, Washington over Pittsburgh, 30-23. to Jay Schrader in his first full game at quarterback, replacing Joe Theismann. And that's a tough thing to do. Green Bay has gone on top of the Rams. How hmm. about that, 17-14? What's happening quarter. to the Rams? Giants have increased their lead over St. Louis, and word we have is that Neil Lomax... Injured his passing arm, is doubtful to return. Denver leads the Raiders by second. Second down. Door set to the 24-yard line. And Kansas City leading Indianapolis, trying to halt a seven-game losing streak. That game being played in Kansas City. Door set now with 50 yards on 20 carries, one touchdown. Just to, to clarify the rule interpretation at the beginning of the game, there was a fumble and a near simultaneous face mask penalty. And we've received word. The rule states that the ball goes to the team which had possession of the ball when the foul occurred. Therefore, because the Eagles had not gained possession, the Cowboys retained possession. That's the official rule interpretation. Here's White freelancing. First down at the 37-yard line. Looks like Brad Shaw at his best. <laughs> 
I'm not that fast, but I wasn't. That's a good job, though. He got a lot of pressure from the outside. It forced Danny up inside. He was looking downfield the whole time, and there was no one open. Gets pressure from the outside. White and Brown force him out. Does a little maneuvering. Then Dorsett gets out of his way, and then Danny turns on that great athletic speed he has and gets down there and picks up the first down. Good slide, too. You know, if you go head first, you can get up and run if they don't touch you. Maybe we'll do that later on and surprise everyone. Not unless he's foolish. 13 of 16 for 137, and now he's getting yardage on the ground. First and 10 from the 35. Newsom will be caught for a loss. Oh, the 32. Ken Clark, excuse me, Vern, nose tackle Clark coming around doing a fine job that time of slipping Rafford. He's blocking right on it. See Gary Cobb reach down then number 50 and try and bat the ball out. In the first game between these two teams, as you look at Ken Clark, Cobb was doing that on Dorsett throughout most of the game. He tackled Dorsett, reached down, and tripped the ball out and flick it away. Gary and Cobb started his career with Dallas, and that is what began the antagonism in the first game. And he just tried to do it again on Newsom. So we'll... We'll see if Cobb tries to flick that ball out anymore this afternoon. James Jones in the lineup, white back to throw. Across the middle, incomplete, and a flag down on the far side of the field. Well, Jones is going to say that 51 Wilkes had him and, and was keeping him from getting into the passing lane. The flag is down. You know, we haven't done a very good job today of getting these, these, you know, these, these penalties, but i got to believe that Cobb was holding Jones. I think you're right. Let's see. Well, guess what? <laughs> another meeting. There's oh, a no. bulletin. Another meeting. Holding number 51. Hey. Reggie Wilkes. Wilkes. Wilkes holding Jones. Did I say Cobb? Mm -hmm. I was just going to let it slide if Were you hadn't you? brought it back up again. Well, I knew it was Wilkes. I was hoping you'd come in and say Wilkes did it, not Cobb, but you didn't. Didn't want to point that out. I was just going to let it slip. Wait, you make mistakes. <laughs> I made enough of them out there. Everybody had 50, 100 million people saw them. You also made enough good plays <laughs> to win four rings. I know that. 3.35 to go. Cowboys get a first down on the holding call on Reggie Wilkes. It does upset me, though, that it makes a mistake. I can tell you're really going right <laughs> down under the table. First and ten. White across oh, the right open. So, looks like a sand crab as he goes for an additional four yards. Well, the Cowboys are an amazing football team at that they do so much gadgetry and try to hit these little short passes, but then when they want to, they have the ability to throw these deep routes, and that's a 20-yard deep end against the zone. That's where everybody just drops off and covers an area. Renfro got down there, slowed down, got in a big open spot, and Danny fired the football in there. I like those kind of routes, those 20 and 25-yard routes. They're fun to do. They're fun to watch, and boy, when you complete them, that's big yardage. Mike Renfro was raised in Fort Worth, graduated from TCU, where his team won just one game, played most of his career with the Oilers, and was acquired for Butch Johnson summer before last. First down 10, reverse, faked, and White lobs it out, and boy, was that mixed up. There's no one, they, there was no one out there to catch that, that, I don't know what that was, it looked like a screen. Tom's Jim, looking down to see what play he called. Yeah, he's looking at his deal, but Jim Cooper, the right tackle, Jim ducked. He, he actually ducked so that the football wouldn't hit him in the head. It was actually a screen designed to get to Newsom, but Newsom was nowhere in sight. Tom's going to see this. I can't believe that. I drew that up on the computer the other day, and it looked good. Jim Schaffner's trying to explain it to him. Now Gary Hogaboom, who had nothing to do with the play. Gary's said, in there. Gary, did you signal in that play? Yeah, Gary, get out of here. Second down and ten. Danny said, don't send that play in here anymore. 14 of 18 now for 156. Blitz is threatened by the Eagles. They don't do it much, and they've been burned when they have. They may be changing their defensive alignment. They're coming with the linebackers. White reads it and throws it away. Intended for Mike Renfro. It'll be third down and 10. You know, this game is, is a fun game for a quarterback because what you're doing is matching your mind with that defensive coordinator, and it's just a game of wits. Who can now guess one another? That time Danny saw the blitz, and he saw the linebackers coming, knew he would have man coverage outside. He audible. Now you're going to see the, the linebackers coming, Griggs and Reichenbach, Rickenbach, Reichenbach, and then he just throws it out of bounds. Third down and 10, 2.35 to go. Third quarter, we've had no scoring in this half. It's 21-10 Dallas. Flag is down. 
Wide open. Mike's got a man open down the sideline and throws it out of bounds and incomplete for Tony Hill. There is a flag at the line of scrimmage. Rowan L. Young, number 43, was defending. Illegal motion, number 66. That is Chris Schultz, the left tackle, and that penalty will no doubt be declined and bring up a fourth down and bring on Mike Saxon. Illegal motion, number 66, declined, fourth down. For the second time in the half, the Cowboys get across the midfield stripe, but uh, are unable to move it inside the 40 and have to settle for a Saxon punt. Last time he put it out of bounds at the four-yard line. Evan Cooper waits for it at the 10. Motion on the right side. And now the option rests with the Eagles. Fair catch is taken by Cooper. That's a free play because Dallas will have a chance, or rather Philadelphia will have a chance to return it once again. Illegal motion, right guard. Let's kick it over. Big, big game for Philadelphia, Terry, because well, if they can win it, they really control their own destiny. That's true, Vernon. And, and they know this, and they've, and they've said in Philadelphia in their releases this week, the players have said this is a big game for us, an emotional game. The intensity level is really, they felt like on their side, not so much as on the Cowboys' side. They felt like they were in the driver's seat right now. The Cowboys are 21 to 10. 2.23 to go third quarter, and Saxon will kick it over. Cooper waits as he, again at the pen. Ooh, oh, 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 we got the penalty. My, how quickly the fortunes can change. Saxon is still down. There's no drama here. No acting, that is. He has injured his right foot. But that will be a Cowboy first down. And there are two players injured. Saxon is up, but there is an eagle still on the ground. The eagle, the man that is hurt by the eagles is the man that tried to block the kick. Number 20, Andre Waters, and he was the man that Saxon ends up kicking. Now, here, now you're going to see Saxon take the ball, try to kick it out of bounds on the right. Points up. That gives it a nice half flop. Now here comes Water, and he comes in, and he hits Saxon right in the knee. Then, holy mackerel, who, where's the guy that's hurt? That's Ellis, 24. That, that was Ray Ellis, but Waters was over to the right-hand side, and he went down. And he went the foot maybe had a blowout in a, in a tube there there is Mike Saxon on the sideline well the Cowboys get new life after the roughing the kicker call they still lead it 21 10 yeah Ellis yeah. 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 tried to get to and then Waters gets hurt but how did Waters get hurt 21 all but 21 17 Dickerson. 20 to 3. Hello. Was hit by a cowboy about six yards away from the punt, and it was Ray Ellis who actually hit Mike Saxon, and Saxon has uh, had his foot taped over on the sideline. Ken Locker, the Cowboys' assistant trainer, working on him, and Andre Waters helped the bench. Yeah, what happened was that normally the kicker, if he kicks a guy like that, you would think that Waters was the guy who wasn't hurt, but actually it was Ray Ellis, 24, the strong safety that he kicked. Cowboys do get new life with 2.14 to go. And off goes to Timmy Newsom for a tough one yard over the right guard spot. And that's about it. Now let's go to New York for this NFL update with Brent Musburger. Cowboys win this game and New York wins that they will stay tied and the Redskins will be a game out second down and nine report on Mike Saxon the bruised right foot but he will return Jimmy Newsom searching for an area in which to run and can't find anything and fumbles after he hits the ground Ray Ellis 24 you know Ray Ellis is the strong safety who is in, in most cases would be the guy supporting runs to the tight end side but 
When I talked to him yesterday, he said, Terry, I am a linebacker. That's what I am. That's what I was at Ohio State, and that's what I am here. Actually, I'm a defensive back, but I play as a linebacker. The last player drafted in 81 was Phil Nelson, the tight end from Delaware by the Raiders. Ray Ellis also played as a wide receiver in high school at Canton McKinley High School in Ohio, the Canton Bulldogs. Said he wore number 82, and for all the world, you couldn't convince him he was not John Stallworth in the Steelers. That was his idol. I'm sorry, he was. <laughs> Third down. Tipped away by Roy Nell Young, right in front of Drew Pearson and in front of Tony Hill. Well, Drew was over there coaching. I don't blame Danny for picking on Roy Nell Young, because as you can see, folks, as he runs off, he has a cast on his right arm. He has a broken right arm. Now, he does a good job of coming across, and my gosh, what does he do? Good job of keeping the left arm back and slapping the football away with his good arm. Well, here's a sense of deja vu. The punter for the Cowboys will be Danny White. Up until two years ago, he fulfilled a dual role. I wonder if he's hyperventilating right now. He hasn't done this in a couple of years. But he's a good one, and he does practice during the week. First one this season, though. They wanted to get him away from this because they didn't want him. Beauty. How about that for a kick? How about that for a kick? <laughs> How about that for a kick? But they're going to say touchback. And Saxon leads the cheers. Well, this was a high knuckle ball that went and hit. It got a perfect cowboy bounce, bounces straight up. And who's standing there? But number 26 that time downs as he downs it on the one yard line. But he said he went into the end zone. Timeout on the field. That ball, that ball went up and was just doing this right here. Just a I knuckle he, I ball. I thought he had it. I, well, yeah, I, could get, I actually thought it was down on the one yard line. Hit I don't know. Foot. Can we see it again? Denver. Vince Albritton was the man down under the punt, and his left foot was on the line as he batted the ball back into the field of play. As a result, it's a touchback, and the Eagles take over at the 20. Look at this total offense. One yard separating the two teams. Big play in the game by the Eagles, a 74-yard run for a touchdown. Herman Hunter, that made it 10-7 back in the first quarter. Jaworski fires it out, could have been intercepted. Jeff Rohr was there and just didn't react quickly enough. He was closest to the play as Kenny Jackson trucks back. Well, what he tried to do that time was they'd been running Jackson early, and this time they come out and have Jackson come out and make an option route. Option meaning key the linebacker, go inside, go outside, or go up the field. Jackson went inside, Jaworski threw it outside. Jaworski not having a stellar day, 9 of 21 and two interceptions. And again, playing with a bruised right shoulder. Danny White, of course, playing with a jammed neck. Both quarterbacks hurt him. Blitz is coming from the linebackers. Jaworski goes deep left side, and they burn Ron Fellows on that left side. Very interesting. You just got through saying Jaworski was not having a good game. And the thing, if there's a reason for it, he came in expecting the man coverage, which he does an outstanding job of throwing against. They've given him zone. Now they come up and give him man coverage, and I'd be doggone if he doesn't come back and hit a big pass out in the left to number 81, Jackson. Boy, he is wide open. Ron Fellows was laying off, and Jeff Rohr was the linebacker who had dropped back. And both of them began to get a verbal assault from defensive coach Ernie Stautner after the catch. Jaworski play fake. Fires it out. Incomplete at the 32-yard line, intended for Kenny Quick, and he and Ron Fellows doing battle. Well, we hadn't mentioned Ed Jones's number yet, or even his name, number 72, but the play action on first down, trying to catch the Cowboys, sitting there in that flex, which is a reading defense, which means they don't rush the passer, just sit there and read the guards and tackles as you look at Jones. But that time, the Cowboys once again fooled them and rushed the passer on first down and messed them up, put a lot of pressure on, on Jaworski and forced him to make a bad pass. Report from the bench on Andre Waters is that he has leg cramps on that punt. Uh, a couple of plays uh, a couple of series ago, but will probably return as Andre Waters. Second down and 10. 21 10, Dallas leads. And Jaworski back to throw with the linebackers coming. Double coverage. Clint Scale is back with Everson Walls as they do double duty on Mike Quick. Interesting thing on. 
these Cowboy defensive backs, they're a talkative bunch. And there was a lot of controversy before the Monday night loss to St. Louis about Thurman's thieves that they have been labeled by Danny White. They came out and uh, and posed for a local television anchor man <laughs> in, in hats and sunglasses about an hour and a half before the game. And a got a lot of promotion. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. But look at this. They backed up the words with a lot of action and update Everson Walls to eight interceptions. I never liked talking. I never liked I like keeping my mouth shut and just playing. There's enough pressure on you without out there promoting yourself. From the shotgun. Five-man rush. Jaworski left side. Oh, beautiful Acrobatic catch. Acrobatic catch over there by Greg Garrity. I had this guy in Pittsburgh, and we loved him. And I, I've said this. I don't even know if you know this, but I only didn't throw many touchdown passes but against the Jets my last year I threw a touchdown pass to this guy that tore the ligament in my right arm and finished my career off but he caught it that's the end of the third quarter with a score 21 10 Dallas we now pause for a word from your local station so good First down, 10, Philadelphia from the Cowboy 38-yard line as we open the quarter. Ernest Jackson coming left and tackled by Jeff Rohr, and then a flag comes from well downfield. May call tripping. Side judge is the man who made the call. Nope, holding. And that'll go against Philadelphia and cost him 10 yards. Holding, number 66. First down. Seventh penalty of the game against the Eagles. And Ken Reeves, who was really one of the keys to the offensive turnaround for Philadelphia. They started the number one draft choice, Kevin Allen, at left tackle for the first four games of the year. And he, quite frankly, had an awful time. And they brought in Reeves as a sixth-round draft choice out of A&M, and he has solidified that left tackle spot. And he's more than held his own against Jeff Jeffco today. Now it's first down 20. 21-10, Dallas leads it. Turn one, Chris Terry Bradshaw here at Texas Stadium. Blitz is coming by the linebackers. Pass will be intercepted. Jeff Dexter Finkscale. Third interception today. And Ken Quick drags him down, or Kenny Jackson, rather, as Crazy Ray celebrates on the sideline. Well, Jaworski is going to be credited with, a, with his third interception, but actually what happens is he finds his receiver open, he's going to throw the ball, and then his receiver, the tight end Spagnola, trips on the turf and falls down, makes it for an easy reception for clink scale number 47. Boy, that's terrible. That just kills you. I mean, this, you know, those suckers are hard. You know, they come all the time, but when you just get one with a turf tackling the receiver. That is the third for clink scale this year. The Cowboys take over at the 34. Newsom going left. Reads his way upfield across the 40 to the 42. Now for another National Football League update. Let's go back to Brent Musburger in New York. Los Angeles going for its ninth win of the year. The Cowboys are going for their eighth, and they lead 21-10 here with a second down and two. High formation, Dorsett the deep back. Newsom has carried the ball as much today as he has in any game this year, and this time Ken Clark says, not here. Ken Clark actually knocked the football loose, and it was fumbled, but, but the Cowboys were fortunate enough to recover it. There's Ken Clark, 71, the nose tackle. Saw the Los Angeles lead. The Giants have now increased their lead over St. Louis 27-3 in the fourth quarter as the Cardinals continue to slide south. Mark Wilson scored on a run after having thrown to Trey Junkin for the previous touchdown, and the Raiders lead Denver by seven in the third quarter. We have a third down and two, and the Cowboys lead it here 21-10. From the shotgun, Danny White, who is so far 14-21, has missed his last three passes. Four-man rush, White left side. Caught from behind, that's enough for the first down. There's a fumble on the play, but the Cowboys recover. Oh, now they say incomplete pass. 
juggling the ball. Herman Edwards says, nice call, ref. And that will bring up a fourth down. Tom Landry's not agreeing with the call. And Mike Saxon is on the punt. Well, the back judge is going to come in and overrule this completion, or what we thought was a completion. There's a ball outside, a good catch that time by Tony. Or I, well, no. Hey, back judge made a good call, Vern, and incomplete. So Saxon, having missed one punt with a bruised foot, is back on to kick. Evan Cooper is back at the 15-yard line. 21-10, no scoring in this half. Saxon goes left side, and that is not a particularly effective kick. It'll go out of bounds at the 25-yard line. 33-yard punt with a hang time of only 3.9. It's 21-10. I got a little story to go along with this, so. With this graphic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you are a Cowboy fan, that's a rather awesome graphic. Dallas is 50 and 3 in games in which they've led after the third quarter since 1980. If you are an Eagle fan, take heart. The last time the Cowboys lost a lead in the fourth quarter was in Philadelphia, October 20th. The Eagles were the last team to come from behind and defeat Dallas in the fourth quarter. It's 21-10 right now, and we've got 13-03 to go in the game. Ron Jaworski is 11 of 26. Splitbacks on first down 10. Not much pressure this time, and Jaworski goes deep for a wide open Mike Quick, but the pass is short, and Quick can't get there. You know, one of the things when I played, and I can get into Ron's mind a little bit, the thing that the Cowboys have done so successfully over the years as a quarterback is the fact that you never can figure out when they're going to give you a zone, when they're going to give you a man, and when they're going to blitz you. And it drives you absolute, absolutely batty. And that time, Ron expected one thing. He's got this time now. He, he forces a pass out there, and the guy's wide open. But it's a mind game that they're playing the defense with him. Three interceptions, one of the key figures today at second down and ten. 21-10 Dallas. Play fake. Jaworski right side. As he's tied in, Spagnola open for the catch. John works on Wall Street as a broker in the offseason, graduate of Yale. Took a year off to serve as Senator Bill Bradley's driver during a re-election campaign in New Jersey. He's very interested in politics. What if he got paid pretty good for that? Probably not. <laughs> not as much as he's getting right now. He's a bright Interesting young man. Two catches today for 17, and that's not what they wanted out of the tight end today. I wanted to go to Yale. It was either Louisiana Tech or Yale, huh? I'm talking about from a doctor. Huh. Third down, four. Jaworski across the middle, oh. caught, but short of the first down after a terrific hit from Bill Bates. And Dennis Thurman was also there to collaborate on the tackle. That'll bring forth the roar from this sellout crowd. Well, you're going to see Herman Hunter, 36, trying to pick up the first down. Dwarski has time, finds Hunter. There's the shot. Boy, over the top comes, well, actually, that's Thurman. Thurman. Thurman comes over and just lowers the boom. Mike Coran the punt for the fourth time. You know, if you need four yards, don't run a four-yard route, right? Get beyond that stuff. Seems... Pretty logical. Fair catch call by Bates at the 20. It's been a chess game here in the second half. We've had no blood drawn, no scoring. It was 21-10 at the half. It still is. You're good. Oh, boy, will I ever. Yeah. We have a doubleheader for you today and again next Sunday on CBS. Many of you will see Minnesota at Philadelphia as the Eagles keep their playoff hopes alive. The Rams are at New Orleans or Tampa Bay versus Green Bay. And then the second half, what a critical game this will be for both these teams. The 49ers travel across country to take on the Redskins who won today. That's next Sunday on CBS. First down, 10 Cowboys. See if they motion on first down. Nope, no motion. Danny White goes left side. It's been primarily the pass for the Cowboys in moving the football today, and they pick up five on first down. Ray Ellis, number 24, made the tackle. Timmy Newsom with the catch. 
Ellis, as we said, was a wide receiver back in high school, and only Ellis, Greg Brown, and Leonard Mitchell remain on the Eagle roster from that 81 draft. He was the last man drafted, Mitchell the first, and Greg Brown was a free agent. Second down and five. Danny White having a spectacular day from a percentage point of view. Not a lot of long passes so far. Second and five. Quick drop and a fake. Now he goes deep and the flag is down. It's picked off, but there is a flag down. This is Wes Hopkins with his second of the game, and he's still running. And finally tackled by Howard Richards, who has replaced Chris Schultz at left tackle. Of that old pump, pump to the outside, set the corner, bring him up, and then have the receiver go downfield for the touchdown. Holding number 46. That wipes out Wes Hopkins' second pass interception of the day, and it's called on Herman Edwards. Edwards evidently jumped over on the pump fake and went through the receiver and held him up and allowed Hopkins to come over from his safety spot and pick off that pass, that little pump shot that uh, Danny did that time to freeze the corner. Actually, back, actually, well, it was intercepted, but it worked for him. Hopkins is down in front of the Cowboy bench. What a marvelous year he is having. We're going to look at this. There's the shot. All right. we. There's the uh, interception by Hopkins. Now, you can't really tell whether or not Herman Edwards did anything to uh, to heal that time. To, to Wes Hopkins was a walk-on at SMU. His hometown is Birmingham, Alabama. Became uh, an instant success here and was an All-American his senior year. Back home, he lives in Dallas in the offseason. Six interceptions this year. And there's a, not even an underground campaign to get him in the Pro Bowl. I think everybody recognizes that he has now become one of the best free safeties in the National Football League. Well, you're going to see after he makes the interception as he's running with the football, the injury. He's down now. He's cutting back to the outside. Now he seems appears to be okay here. Now Titansor misses him. Now Danny White's there. That's probably what scared him there. You can see the right ankle. He spun on the right ankle and Cooper made the tackle. He spun on the right ankle and Cooper was hanging on him, put all that pressure on it. Howard Richards instead of Cooper who made the tackle, but <laughs> Hopkins is down. Cooper probably taped this. He appreciated me putting him in That's there on right. the tackle. Well, he's walking off, so he looks okay. This weekend, CBS Sports will present two exciting college football matchups. Friday at 2.30 Eastern, Virginia takes on Maryland in the clash of ACC rivals. Steve Davis and I are going to hook up on that one. And then on Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, Notre Dame tangles with fourth-ranked Miami and their outstanding quarterback, Vinny Testaverde. College football, Friday and Saturday on the holidays here on CBS Sports. Hopkins walking off without assistance. And the Cowboys get yet one more break on a penalty by the Eagles who've been penalized eight times today. And the most have been costly for them. Wes Hopkins heading to the, Cow the Philadelphia bench. Bernard Wilson, number 22, has taken his spot. First down, 10 Dallas. Eagles have... Only won twice here since the stadium opened in 1971. Pitch out. Dorsett with Titans are leading the way. Titans are gets the block on Ray Ellis, and Dorsett is bumped out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Herman Edwards, number 46, made the tackle. Kind of interesting. This time earlier when Hopkins was in the football game, Vern, we saw Renfro cracking back and missing the strong safety Ellis and going for Hopkins. Well, now that Wilson's in there, that time Renfro came down instead of cracking on the free safety. He went ahead that time and blocked Ray Ellis, the strong safety. So there you see the respect that they have for Hopkins. As a testimony to his durability, Tony Dorsett needs only one more yard for another 1,000-yard season, which would be his eighth and ninth year, nine years with Dallas. And he's got it on that carry. Dorsett is over 1,000 yards once again. That's really something. 10,000-plus yards now. They said he might be too small to last in this league. But listen to the ovation for Tony Dorsett, the Cowboys number 33.
Third down and one. 9.50 to go in the ball game. 21 10 Dallas. Door set with Newsom leading the way. Has to move the chain as the Cowboys move it out to the 43 yard line, and Bernard Wilson makes the tackle. Reggie Wilkes was there, number 51. Well, I'll tell you, he's rushed the football 23 times for 65 yards. And I'll tell you, they have been hard, tough yards. You know, the last time he got 100 yards, he had that one big runner, but gainer. But this time, boy, every yard he's had, he's had two or three guys just popping him right there at the line of scrimmage. Cowboys have moved it on the in the air much more so than on the ground today, and that is not what was expected. But they haven't been overwhelming in the air. We're, we're talking very minimal yardage. Giants blowing out St. Louis. Dorsett freelancing and getting a couple. Of course, the Cowboys and the Giants entered today tied for the top. And the Giants apparently will go eight and four. The Cowboys struggling to join them at eight and four. Washington won today, so they will stay one game back. Philadelphia is still not out of it. And there are the Eastern Division standings. Giants and Philadelphia both with four and two records. The Cowboys three and two. Washington not quite as well. Second down. White fires it out. Nice catch at the 40, and the flag is down as Renfro who's been a quiet factor the last month or so, is having a big day today. Well, that was a good job that time. White threw the football right right where he had to throw it, and that time Renfro coming underneath Herman Edwards made a fine catch. Illegal contact, number 46, declined, first down. That is a first down at the 41-yard line, and Herman Edwards... You're going to see Edwards on the top left of your screen. Well, actually, he's in the top right, folks, as Renfro drives him deep. Now, Edwards is reading his set, seeing when he's going to plant. Now he sees him set. There's the hand on him. Now Renfro coming back to White, which is what a receiver is to do. And, boy, that was a good catch that time. Doggone near dropped that ball and pulled his right hand over to save it. Renfro has caught four for 53 yards now. 21-10. That's what we start to have. Right back. Right back. Whoa. Whoa. If the play stands, will be dropped for a five-yard loss. Let's see if the linebackers did jump or the Cowboys drew them off. And from the reaction of Reggie White and Reichenbach, I think it might be an initial call against Philadelphia. Jerry Bergman, Marion Campbell looks on the Swamp Fox. The Swamp Fox. A great I've name. heard you call him that all day long. I Illegal motion, white card. All right, let's see if Peterson does indeed move before the snap of the ball. The linebackers are, there's your threat. All right, there it is. Now, actually, you can see that Grigg was off sides, but his left foot, his left foot intimidated Peterson, so Peterson moved before the snap of the football, which means that, that it is a penalty against the Cowboys. So Dorsett loses four yards. What do you want, honey? All of a sudden, I'm reminded by the, of the story of Dave Hampton of Atlanta trying to get 1,000 yards in the last game. He got over 1,000. He had 1,002. They let him carry one more time. He lost seven and wound up with 995 for the season. There's Newsom. Three down the sideline. First down at the 20. One of those simple plays where the quarterback comes out and hits Newsom out in the flat. The strong safety this time, Ray Ellis, will come up. There's a play action to Dorsett, freezes the linebackers. Now Danny comes out, there's Newsom. Now look, five yards pass. Now here comes Ray Ellis, 24, their strong safety. He misses the tackle. Newsom breaks that tackle, gets the first down, and then finally gets on down. Bernard Wilson, 22, finally has to make the stop. Had a feature article in the Dallas newspaper earlier this week on Timmy Newsom. He said, no, I'm not happy with the kind of year I'm having. He's got to be pleased today with five catches now for 65 yards and 11 carries for 45. First down to 22. Dorsett breaks the first, can't break the second, and moves it to the 20-yard line. You, gotta, you, you have to be impressed with the linebacking group the Eagles have. That time that Clark and White and Brown, the linemen penetrated, then the linebackers fill and go to the football as well as any group I've seen. And I mean this, I used to get sick and tired of guys that said, boy, these guys, are everybody gets to the football, but they really do gather at the football well. There's Ray Ellis, 24. 
First, second down, rather, at the 20 yard line. 21 10. Marion Campbell perched up on his toes as he watches. His team has won five of six. The Cowboys have lost three of their last five. Go set going run. Nice little juke move to the left side. He's down to the 15. It'll be third and about three. Gary Cobb, number 50, made the tackle. Seventy one yards on twenty seven carries. Denver has come back and tied the Raiders up twenty eight all in the fourth quarter. And the Rams now lead thirty one seventeen over Green Bay in the fourth. And we gave you that St. Louis New York store the Giants well on their way to a win. Six thirty three to go in this ball game. The Cowboys trying to up their record to eight and four. Blitz is on. Newsom going left. Dorset tries to lay a block. So does Cosby. And it looks like Newsom got a first down at the nine. You know, if, there, if there's a key to the to the offense of, of the Cowboys that they're running today that is compared to the one that they run against the Eagles the last time, it's the patience that Danny White has shown in executing their offense. As we saw Hogaboom play well, then go deep and Hopkins intercepts, especially in scoring territory. But today, number 11 has shown the patience to direct the offense and take what the Eagles will give him. He hasn't forced things, although he has two interceptions, one with call back, but he has directed the offense and been very, very patient with it. That plays right into his strong suit, too, doesn't it? Yes, he's not a quarterback that is going to do anything that he knows he can't do. He stays within himself, which is the key to success. Uh-oh. Pulls up, fires deep. Oh, touchdown. There is a flag, but if it stands, it's Cosby's third of the day. Great effort this time by White to avoid being sacked and then firing the football to Cosby, who made an unbelievable effort. That's interference, number 84. And there's why he made the great catch. He pushed and got open. But I'm going to tell you, I don't care if he pushed, kicked, or what. That's a great catch. An even better job by White of avoiding the sack and getting the That's ball to Cosby. number 84, first down. Jim Schaffner told us yesterday that they wanted to get Doug Cosby involved in the offense today. They felt like he, they hadn't been getting the ball to him. They have so far. Now we're going to see Gary Cobb 50 run right by Danny, and he steps up and fires to Cosby. Now I don't know where he made the, uh, where he pushed off and got open, but he did get open. That sets up a, a first and goal from the 19-yard line. 21-10 to 6:19 to go in the game. Short step. Mike Renko. That one will stand. Nineteen-yard touchdown call. White to Renko. The Cowboys, who had scored only seven touchdowns in their last five games, have scored four today. The Eagles came in number three in the NFL in yielding points. Now, I like the idea of you throw one, it's called back, get back there and throw another one. That time, this simple slant pattern, Rodell Young, number 43, trailing all the way on Renfro. White gets it in there for the six. Five catches, 73 yards from Mike Renfro. Okaboom will hold for Septian's kick. Missed it. So it stays 27 to 10. Dallas leads. <clears throat> okay. Doing fine, Bucker. Okay. Cowboys get the first touchdown of the second half and increase the lead to 17, 27, 10. They went 80 yards in 12 plays. It took five minutes and 18 seconds. Danny White found Mel Renfro for the touchdown toss. It was White's third touchdown pass today. Raphael Septien, who missed the extra point, will kick off. Left side. Bounces. Picked up by Elbert Fowles. And he runs into Everson Walls and is down near the 23-yard line. 
Watch Mike Renfro lined up on the right side. Well, Barry. the real key to this is the release of Cosby. He comes down inside. He frees the weak safety. Now the strong safety is going to drop outside. Renfro is going to come down, set the corner, then break inside, and there's no no one in the middle, and that's because of the tight end. Cosby, see the weak safety, Bernard Wilson staying on the tight end, and look outside. No one outside on 82 Renfro. He gets inside and does a good job of get, catching that touchdown pass. Ron Jaworski will go from a shotgun on first down 10 with 6.06 to go. The Eagles back home against Minnesota next week. They played him twice in the final five games. That pass incomplete. Intended for John Spagnola. Philadelphia's last five possessions, three punts and two interceptions. The Cowboys had picked off 18 passes defensively in the first six games, but only eight in the last five. So they have recovered this afternoon with three Jaworski interceptions. Well, one thing you've always, I always experienced as a player, when you beat a divisional team one time, when you play them the next time, you better get ready because it's going to be a dogfight. Today, the Cowboys are taking it to the Eagles. Tough to sweep, isn't it? Sir? It really is. It really is. Philadelphia last swept Dallas. That is, won both games in the season in 1964. Spagnola with that catch, and that might be enough for the first down, depending on the spot, which is at the 33-yard line. Vince Albritt intended the cornerback and made the tackle. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League as an, and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. Jaworski and the Eagles have a first down. They trail 27-10 with under six minutes remaining in the ballgame. That pass, no oh, great catch by Mike Quick, and he's dragged down by a shirt tail by Bill Bates. Quick. Makes a 16-yard gain. Well, that was just a great catch. That time he was he was open, and Dworsky had the football behind him, but quick with those great hands, reaches in behind him and snaps and snags the football with one hand and brings it around and takes it away from Thurman in the 32. Eagles will go without a huddle with 5.25 remaining in the ballgame. Catch is made in front of the defensive back, Vince Albritton, by John Spagnola. Report from the Eagle bench, now the official word, Wes Hopkins, the outstanding free safety, has a sprained left tendon and probably will not return today. Spagnola is one of those tight ends you often dream about having because not only does he have the ability to block, but he has the ability to escape the linebackers at the line of scrimmage and get loose and run good man-to-man -man routes and get open. And Jaworski and Spagnola have been a good team of finding the open area and connecting on crucial, crucial passes. Timeout has been called. Coming up, the NFL today on Thursday, home for Thanksgiving. As Herb Cross, Brett Musburger, and Jimmy the Greek all return to their hometowns on the eve of Thanksgiving. And you'll see... Those features as a part of Home for Thanksgiving at 3.30 Eastern Time. That, of course, will kick off our coverage of the NFL on Thanksgiving Day. And the Cowboys, as is traditional, will be at home against the St. Louis Cardinals here on Thursday afternoon. Then Dallas will have 10 days before they get ready for a trip to Cincinnati. The Cardinals and Cowboys, and it begins at 3.30 Eastern Time. Dallas, in its remaining schedule, has St. Louis coming up on Thursday. Then 10 days off, they travel to Cincinnati for the first time ever. The Cowboys have never played there. And then they are back home against the Giants, and they wind up the season on the road at San Francisco. Well, the interesting thing that will be for the followers of the Cowboys will be to see how they play up there, because I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be cold. And more than likely, if it's cold, it might be raining a little bit and be about 25 degrees. And if it's not raining, I can doggone sure promise you that it's going to be snowing. And if it isn't snowing, it'll be sleety. So what was what was the toughest stadium for you as a visiting team to play in for Pittsburgh? Well, the hardest team for me to play in it, a, as a player was right here. Really? Yep. This was the hardest as a player to, in this football team. The hardest as a fan support would have been Oakland when they were in Oakland because those fans there, you, you went in with, uh, you had to wear those bulletproof jackets. That was a tough place to play, but Cowboys are always very, very hard to beat right here. Second down and three. Eagles trail 27-10. Jaworski bombs away. 
And the oh, catch is catch. made. Greg Garrity. Garrity having a fantastic day as a guy that seldom used only in only when they go with three wide receivers. But even more remarkable is all Britain safety blitzes on Jaworski. And there he comes, 36, and, and then Ron just stands in there and just unloads it, knowing he's going to get bombed. Now look at Garrity, both feet inbounds. Boy, that's a great catch. That is a terrific catch, and the Eagles have a first down at the 11-yard line. Now, we've got 5-12 left, and the Cowboys may be thinking, hey, baby, we got this wrapped up. But I'm going to tell you, these Eagles aren't, aren't thinking that way. They score here. We get look 27-17, onside kick. Here we go again. Jaworski now has 17 of 34 for 235 yards. First down at the 11. Safety blitz. Jaworski rolls out, pulls up, fires deep. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Mike Quick. And the Eagles still have life. They are still flying. The Cowboys blitz the thing that we had said earlier in the broadcast. They had burned them in the earlier game when they blitzed them. The, the Eagles burned them and beat them on the blitz. This time the Cowboys try it again coming from the right. All out blitz downs from the left. Now outside goes Ron. He picks up quick wide open in the end zone. Touchdown. Paul McFadden will offer the extra point. He kicks it true. And the lead has been shaved to 10. Coming up next Sunday on CBS, another CBS doubleheader, and we'll kick it off with the Eagles at home against Minnesota. First time they will host the Vikings, and uh, they end the season going to Minnesota. The Rams against New Orleans, and some of you will see Tampa Bay versus Green Bay. That's the first half of our doubleheader. And then what a critical game this will be. The 49ers, who are at home against Seattle tomorrow night, have to go across the country to take on the Redskins, who are very, very much involved in this race, having won the last two weeks. They won Monday night against the Giants as Jay Schrader came on to lead them, and they defeated Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh today. That is the second half of our CBS doubleheader a week from today. Marion Campbell's team still has life as they trail by 10 with 5.06 to go in the ballgame. A 77-yard drive in six plays, and the big one was the catch by Greg Garrity. Well, he's one of those little guys, and we had him in Pittsburgh, and they liked him so much because the guy could catch everything, and he had such a great attitude, great work habits, so they kept him around, and he played well for us. McFadden getting ready to try the onside kick. Comes to the near side. Cosby bothers oh. the ball. There's a battle for it. Who got it? At the 45-yard line, it hit Cosby first. And now it looks like a rugby scrum. We'll see who comes out of there. It won't be James Jones. Not to do, but wait till they unstack the bodies. See Bates and Griggs with differing opinions. Still no official indication. Now there is the Cowboys get it. It's Dutton. Landry and White look on. I'll tell you, that was a great kick. That's one of those, you kick it high, it hits the ground, bounces up, then hits the ground, then bounces up again, and anyone can get this football. Actually, the Eagles had control of this football or had their hands on it twice. Now, here's the kick. Look, one bounce now. Boom. Whip. Now, it hits Cosby over, over, over his head. Now, it's just sitting there free for anyone to grab. Now, all of a sudden, here comes someone, whoever. Eagle, he misses it. Another eagle misses. Another eagle misses it. And then finally, the Cowboys recover it. But that was an excellent onside kick. It was Victor Scott, number 22, who survived the battle down at the bottom. That's about the 14th piece of gum Coach Landry has put in his mouth in this <laughs> hey, ball game. He has chewed a lot of gum. Yes, indeed. He? First down and 10, Dallas, with 4:56 to go in the ball game. Timmy Newsom with the carry and Mike Reichenbach. Don't forget that following the conclusion of our game, 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety, except on the West Coast when it will be seen in its regular time slot. Giants, of course, pounding St. Louis. The Cowboys hoping to win the 
keep abreast of them as this division race goes down in the final end now. By the way, George Martin had a 56-yard touchdown return with an intercepted pass, the final giant score. 419 remaining in the game. Danny White with a play fake, lobs it out to Newsom. That's a first down. My goodness, they have utilized Timmy Newsom a lot of this ball game. Well, well, what they've done is everyone knows that Dorsett is the key to the running attack, so what they have done is play action, send Newsom out in the flat, come outside with White, take it out of, of, of Dorsett's belly, and then if the linebackers are deep, then they just dink it out there to Newsom for a two-yard completion, and then he turns it up and makes 8, 9, 10, 11 yards. There's a little cross-buck action. Now you can see Danny's outside. There's no one on, on Newsom. He's wide open out in the flat. As you can see, Cobb, 50, chases him. But, hey, first down. That is Wes Hopkins being taken to the Eagle dressing room with a strained tef tendon in his left ankle. First down and 10. Here's Dorsett. Renfro tries to supply a block, but uh, didn't get much of one. And Roy L. Young is up to help on the tackle along with Reggie Wilkes and Mike Reichenbach. Four minutes to go, and Dorsett easing toward a 100-yard game, which he has not had since the last time these two teams played. Well, I'll tell you, if he gets 100 yards, he's earned it the quiet way because he's got 28 carries for 74 yards right now, and 100 yards would probably ease a little bit of the pain that he's going to average less than four yards in a carry. Second down, 27-17, Dallas leads it. Second down and seven. Your set, about two. Mention the fact that Philadelphia is back home against Minnesota. It will be a special day at Veterans Stadium because it'll be the 25th reunion of the 1960 championship team. Marion Campbell, who played defensive end on that team, will obviously be there, but a colleague of ours, Tommy Brookshire, is going to be back home in Philadelphia. Chuck Bednarik. A lot of those players. There was some concern that uh, Sonny Jurgensen might not be able to make it back because he's broadcasting the Redskins on radio. <laughs> and I'll bet you with the 49ers coming to town, said he's, Sonny's going to send his regrets. <laughs> Third down and five, but that reunion takes place for the Eagles next Sunday at the vet. 2.48 remaining in the game. White, left side, man open. Mike Renfro. Tony Hill, thank your pardon. And that gives Dallas a first and goal at the 10. The key to this pass is, I don't know if White's audible, but look at the right corner, Herman, as he is sitting. Herman Edwards, and look how far off he is. Now, all, 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 all Hill has to do is go down there five or six yards, make a little breakout, catch the ball, break the tackle, and get another couple of yards. They give him a lot of respect for this guy. And they should. Almost 1,000 yards receiving already. Tony Hill, 5 of 49. He's closing in on 1,000 which would be the third time he has accomplished that. Dorsett going left. Gets a block from Howard Richards and a touchdown. What a terrific block by number 70. Allowed Dorsett to ease in untouched. You're going to look again at just a simple handoff and look at Richards on the outside staying with this man Brown pushing him outside boy a big hole opens up and Dorsett just slashes back inside Rafael Septian missed his last extra point that was his first miss since October 28th of 84 against Indianapolis he'll try and start a new string now kick is good and we have the two minute warning the Dallas Cowboys have now put together the highest point total they've accomplished since the opening game of the season. I couldn't even see it on this. And then Hill came down inside on the, oh, I guess he came crashing in on the corner. I will draw it up. We'll see what it looks like. <laughs> Can, okay. I, can I see that one more time, please? Just. <laughs> well, you, you guys are great.
With two minutes remaining in this game, or actually 156, the Dallas Cowboys five touchdowns today. They had only seven in their previous five games. The last drive, 44 yards in six plays. Dorsett got his second touchdown of the day, and he now has 86 yards and 30 carries. Except the end will kick it off, and the Eagles have three men back, Fowles, Hunter, and Evan Cooper. Herman Hunter at the five. Herman Hunter with a lot of room. All the way out to the 48. This is the 11th round draft choice who returned two kickoffs for touchdowns in preseason and helped make the team. That's good for a 42-yard game. Here comes Hunter straight up the field. Notice how they go up the middle. If there's something there, they take it. That time the hole opens up. He turns outside. Now it's just a foot race. Only one really had he gotten by the man that tackled him, number 29. That would have been the kicker that time sets the end. Tony Dorsett has run 30 times today, and that is a personal high. Ties his personal high for a number of carries with the Cowboys. From the shotgun, Jaworski back to throw. Left side almost picked off. Ron Fellows, number 27, intended for Kenny Jackson. Jaworski, 18 of 36 now, hitting 50%. The Rams win it. They go 9-3 and three for the year. And Kansas City, at long last, breaks the seven-game losing streak. They knock off Indianapolis 20-7. to seven. Don't forget that 60 minutes will follow, except on the West Coast. And, of course, also tonight, Murder, She Wrote, and then uh, Richard Crenna in a special feature, the first of two parts called Double Take. And that's coming up tonight on CBS. Second down and 10, Philadelphia trailing now by 17. That pass will be caught at the 45-yard line. Bill Bates makes the tackle of Mike Quick. Tony Dorsett may be having his best day, best year. And Doug Cosby's had a big day today as well. You know, Walter Payton's got just the most enviable record I've ever heard of for a running back, missing only one game in 75 uh, since he came into the league. But this guy's only missed three in his career. And now timeout has been called with 138 to go. Yeah, and they've been fired with three, four, five games left. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to split up production crews, and we wish them well. Thanksgiving Day, the NFL today at 3.30 Eastern, and then the Cardinals and the Cowboys. Dallas, of course, has been uh, tough here at home, particularly in those Thanksgiving games. The last time they lost one at home was 79 to the Houston Oilers. From the shotgun on third and two. Jaworski left side, that'll move the chain as Spagnola makes the catch at the 38. Jaworski now 20 of 38, 125 to go in the ball game. Also want to thank the crew here in the booth, Dave Yaggy, our statistician, Gary Bradshaw, Joe Cash, and Nancy Lundquist for spotting. Across the middle, Spagnola makes the catch at the 32. I think with names like Bradshaw and Lundquist, nepotism might have something to do with who works up here. <laughs> and it does. It helps to know the announcers. <laughs> Final minute of the game, Jones jumps offside. Ed started out with a great season. He's kind of quieted a little bit here in midseason. Fred Wyant, Wyant coming over. Fast start, number 74. Leonard Mitchell. Well, you, we were asking the question, how would they respond to the whooping they got by the Bears, 44 to nothing? We didn't know how they would do. We didn't know where they would blitz. They've done a little bit of everything, but the thing they've done well is that they've scored some, some points today against the Eagles. They have found an offense today that they've been missing for the last five weeks. Here's Mike Quick down at the 26. And really, the yardage from a Dallas perspective, the total num number of yards is not that important for them. It's getting into the end zone, which they haven't done. Yeah, but against the Philadelphia defense, the fact is you're not going to get a lot of yardage. This is a great defensive unit, a solid defensive unit that forces you to take the short stuff. And the key today was the fact that White stayed in there and took the short stuff. And then he got it, and he got it when they came up and gave him zones. Then he got the 20, 25 yarders over the middle of the Renfro. And that was the key. He stayed patient and within the offense. As compared to the last time when they played, when they got greedy, went deep, and Hopkins made the big interceptions. 
Ron Jaworski playing the entirety of the game despite the bruised shoulder comes over to the bench. That is the final Eagle timeout. It comes with 34 seconds to go. So the Cowboys will go eight and four for the year. And Philadelphia will fall to six and six, but certainly not out of it as this thing in all probability will come down to the final weekend of the season. As we told you, 60 minutes will be coming up following the conclusion of our game, except on the West Coast, and Angela Lansbury and Murder, She Wrote, and a special presentation. It stars Richard Crenna and Beverly D'Angelo. It's double take. It's a whodunit. And I know here in one of the Dallas papers this, mor uh, this morning, it got a terrific review. Part one tonight, following Murder, She Wrote, that's all coming up tonight on CBS. Well, the Cowboys' last shutout prior to last week was 15 years ago. They lost to St. Louis. They came back the next week and defeated the Redskins 45-21. Now they have been shut out 44-0, the worst loss in, in terms of numbers in the club's history. They have scored 34 points against the Eagles. So those of you who like the contrast of history might uh, make those comparisons. Second down and one. Jaworski pumps once, goes left side, incomplete intended for Garrity. Actually, Ron was looking to the right side, and Garrity had gone down on Fellows, 27, made a quick inside mood, and had Ron stayed with him just a second and fired the football, Garrity beat Fellows and was wide open in the end zone. He came to him a little bit too late. Jaworski, 285 yards on 23 of 42, but he has been intercepted three times. Quick has caught eight for 82. Spagnola has caught six. Rock, Ken Jackson has caught four. Garrity's caught a couple. Eagles back home against Minnesota next week. 25th year reunion of the 1960 championship team. Jaworski is sacked. That hasn't happened that much today. And Tutal Jones. That is the first sack, as a matter of fact, of Ron Jaworski this afternoon. And it goes to the man they call too tall. Well, you know, you, when, you, when you know that a football team has to throw the football, all you do is pin your ears back and rush. And it's very difficult for the offensive lineman to continuously hold these guys out. That time, Leonard Mitchell, 74, came around. That time, too tall came around him and got the sack. That's Ken Reeves, 66, their left tackle. At the conclusion of today, with four weeks remaining in the regular season, the Cowboys and Giants will stay tied at the top. They meet here on December 15th. The Cowboys won the first game 30-29 to back in October. The Redskins only a game back at 7-5. They are at home next Sunday against the 49ers, and they still must play at Philadelphia. The Eagles are 6-6. Six six. They've got two left with Minnesota. They've got Washington at home, and they must travel to San Diego. And St. Louis is out of it now. Well, not mathematically, because they're four games back with four to go, but the Cardinals really have been in a slump. And they are four and eight. Ken Reeves walks off unassisted. Been a long day for the Eagles. Started off one and four. They've won five of their last six. And the whole turnaround began in the second half of a loss to New Orleans when Ron Jaworski, who had been benched, came on for Randall Cunningham through three touchdown passes in a 23-21 loss. But then they won over St. Louis. They beat the Cowboys. They beat Buffalo in a come from behind. They lost to San Francisco. They beat Atlanta. And then they beat St. Louis last week. But they apparently will fall today with 14 seconds to go. Fourth and nine. Into the end zone for Spagnola, tipped away by Vince Albritton, number 36. And the Cowboys take over on down. And will snap the ball once, and this one will go in the record books. Philadelphia's record at Texas Stadium will fall to two wins and 13 defeats. And their chance to sweep the Cowboys for the first time since 1964 we'll have to wait well they may lose this football game but one thing you can bet this football team believes in themselves they've won some close games matter of fact they said hey the difference this year is we're winning games that we probably would have lost last year i don't expect even at six and six you can the eagles will be, will be in there to the very end they're a winner they're fighting in there struggling hard and uh i don't think you can count them out you better take them serious 
Coming up next, the NFL Today wrap-up show with Brent Musburger. Scores and highlights of all the games on this crazy 12th weekend of the 1985 season. That will be the final play of this game. The Cowboys now get four days off. Marion Campbell waves to Tom Landry. Dallas responds to the 44-0 humiliation at the hands of Chicago last week. Danny White plays superbly, taking everything he has given today, throwing three touchdown passes and getting two on the ground from Tony Dorsett as the Cowboys come from behind and win it by 17. For Terry Bradshaw, this is Vern Lundquist saying so long from Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas where the final score was Dallas 34, Philadelphia 17. Now stay tuned to CBS Sports for the NFL Today wrap-up show with Brent Musburger. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. Dallas in 19...